Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. It's great to have you here. Hope you guys are doing well. Tuning in, of course, from all around the world. We welcome our international audience from the United States, Canada, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia. It's good to have you with us. We also welcome all of our regular faithful viewers who are called the Lovities. They're part of our Lovity Squad. They call me Mr. Lovity. And they call this Lovity Hall, where we broadcast our show Seven days a week, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. This weekend, we've had double loving. We had two shows today and two shows yesterday with amazing guests from Broadway, Hollywood, television, music, film, uh, all kinds of entertainment, culinary arts, sports, comedy, inspiration, you name it. We have guests from uh, all walks of life, and it's really amazing. Uh, over 400 plus episodes of our Entertainment Lifestyle talk show series we have done day in and day out, uh, seven days a week live, and it's really extraordinary. Thanks to everybody who tunes in and who shares and tags on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would be awesome. The channel is Gym Masters TV, and that is where we have housed over 400 plus episodes of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, where we're bringing back the lost art of conversation, kind of like the old school talk shows. You remember Carson and Dick Cavett and Mike Douglas and Merv Griffin and Dick Clark and some of the others sprinkled in with the modern vibe and modern twist of uh, today. And uh, we just love having this opportunity to come into your world and yours into ours as often as we do seven days a week. And it's a pleasure to have you guys here. We have an amazing guest joining me on the show in just a second. Uh, that is Burt Ward, of course, you know, who played Robin on Batman. Yes, the legendary beloved 1960s TV series Batman, and he's done so many other things. And he and his wonderful wife, Tracy, have built this really special company we're going to be talking about uh, that is really for the betterment of animals, dogs, cats. It's really extraordinary. We're going to talk about it in just a second. It's a beautiful thing they're doing to give back. Bert is very much a person who gives back to the community. He's had a blessed life and uh, lots of joys in his life, and he's very aware of all that. And he gives back time after time and we really are honored that he's joining us in just a second so subscribe to our youtube channel gym masters tv click the notification bell so you don't miss any of the amazing content daily episodes of jms live pop-up shows and on location segments and everything else that we do here on our series uh, we have lots of folks tuning in from all around the world let's check in with some of them crystal is in connecticut she says hi jim and everyone happy sunday hope you're having a fantastic weekend looking forward to an epic show with inspiring conversation and lovity yeah i love that that's fantastic kathleen walker is here she's so excited she works with the new york mets and she said, oh, I hope when Bert comes on your show, Jim, because I love your show. I watch it all the time. I hope it's a night when I'm not working with the Mets. So guess what? You're off. He's here. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Uh, so excited to meet Bert Ward. Hi, everyone. I know you guys are pumped. So am I, too. Big fan. Uh, so is Chris, who is watching in Northern Ireland in the Belfast area. Hi, Jim. Welcome to Lovely Hall, Bert. Absolutely. Julia Crane is here. Hi, Jim from Tennessee. And Sherry Larson is checking in. Good evening, one and all. Good to see you, Sherry. Claudia Barto is here. Hi, everyone. I uh, hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. We sure are. And Wozniak is watching from Florida, from the Jacksonville area. She says, hello, Jim and lovely family. Hope you had a wonderful afternoon. We sure did. We had two shows. We had a, a group 
that was uh, from Ireland, Strings and Things. That was an awesome uh, episode. If you missed it, see it on our YouTube channel. And uh, Gary Troyer is watching from Iowa, USA. Hi, Jim and all loveities. Good to see you as well. And Kathleen is watching on her bat phone. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, <laughs> we love that. Jen Barry watching from Allentown, Pennsylvania. She says, hi, Jim, Bert, and Lovities. They say Lovities because in the summer I was saying the show is about light, love, and levity. And I said, uh, Lovity slipped out of my mouth. And from that point forward, it has been nothing but Lovity, which is really, really cool. Tina's here. Hi, Jim, and hi, Lovities and family. Good to see you as well. And welcome, Bert. You are officially a Lovity now. I know he's waited all his life to become a lovey on the Jim Master Show live, and he is. And uh, you in Northern Ireland, Chris, you have arrived in your bat copter. That's cool. And then uh, Mulligan, happy Sunday, one and all. And Renee is watching in Iowa. Hi, everyone. Chris still is here. And of course, I asked if everybody arrived in their Batmobiles tonight. <laughs> Bert arrived in his Batmobile and it's sort of idling outside. Kim says hi from North Carolina. And Christine Clifton says, greetings, Jim and Lovities. Welcome Bert Ward to the show this evening. Looking forward to the conversation with Bert. So wonderful he could join us tonight. And Tina says, hi, Bert from the Poconos. And much more. Keep those comments coming in. Uh, during our live show, we welcome everybody live. We also welcome those of you who are going to be watching this in the replay in the archives on our YouTube channel. We welcome you as well to uh, comment and drop a like on the YouTube channel as well underneath this video if you enjoy it. And uh, it's a pleasure. You know, we really appreciate when you guys do that. Of course, you know Bert from his role as... Robin, of course, he's done so many different things. He's been involved in so many productions and television, so much more. But uh, he's an actor as well as an activist and best known for the portrayal of Robin, the sidekick of Batman, played by Adam West, in the television series Batman, which ran from 66 to 68, though it seems like it ran so, so much longer, only because it's been a part of our lives for so long. Also, he was a part of the theatrical feature film, the Saturday morning animated series, The New Adventures of Batman, the two-episode pilot, Legends of Superheroes, and the animated reunion films, Batman, Return of the Caped Crusaders, and Batman vs. Two-Face, and the live-action television event, Crisis on Infinite Earths. He's also one of the last surviving original actors of the 1960s TV series, Batman. He uh, makes his home in California, and... Uh, he is, again, extraordinary uh, in terms of giving back to the community. We're going to talk about that in this exclusive uh, opportunity to uh, chat with him here on the show. Let's welcome him live and direct from California, the one and only Bert Ward. Hey, Bert, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here, my friend. Hello, citizen. <laughs> welcome to Gotham City. Now, are you in the Bat Cave? You're in the Green Bat Cave, right? Uh, yes, yeah, I have a little green screen behind me, uh, but uh, yeah, this is our, uh, we have a beautiful home uh, east of Los Angeles, uh, and uh, it's also uh, a, a full production studio because we're doing all kinds of television and film projects, and, uh, and, and we have a lot of fun at the same time, as you know, we operate the world's largest giant breed dog rescue, so yeah. along with my beautiful wife, Tracy, I always have a minimum of 50 or more dogs living in our home uh, all together in the last 26 years more than 15,500 so uh, you know it's uh, and, and every day just to give you an idea we feed more than 600 pounds of our gentle giants dog food and so uh, we have lots of dogs and we're we're used to the companionship it's just you know kind of like your show with your levity uh, we have a kind of a levity here because our animals live communally together with us in a very nurturing atmosphere and I, it is a combination i think of the atmosphere how we feed and care for our dogs and a special food that we make that our dogs are living up to 27 years and wow. we have uh, in fact our cats we last year we lost two of our cats one was 31 and one was 32 years old so it's pretty extraordinary that uh my wife and I, we you know we care, we love animals, and this is our charity. And we not just rescued dogs and cats, but we've rescued horses. We were part of Horse Aid. We've rescued sheep, goats, pigs. I mean, ducks. Just about, you know. I mean, if you rescue, you rescue, right? A, a right. life is precious, 
and That's we right. consider life as the most precious commodity in the world. Mm, that is absolutely incredible. And again, uh, bless you and Tracy for doing that uh, work because again, you're really giving back. And like I said in the introduction, you're you're always so spirited to want to give back. And I think that is something I wish more people did. But it's been something you've been doing ever since, and it's you know comes from the way you were raised and your background. It's just something that's in you, Bert. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, of course, most notably. People know you from that beloved series, Batman. And how did that happen? I mean, what an extraordinary opportunity to be graced with this opportunity to be involved in a show that continues. There's there's some, some shows out there like I Love Lucy and Dick Van Dyke and Batman and some of these others, Gilligan's Island, uh, I Dream of Jeannie Bewitched, The Monsters. These shows that just stand the test of time, they make you feel good, you sort of lose yourself in them, and people feel for the characters. They feel as though they know the characters personally. How did this opportunity happen for you in your life, in your youth, to be a part of such a legendary show as Batman? What an incredible <laughs> well, thing. <laughs> well, uh, actually, you know, um, I kind of started in show business young. My father had a, what I would call in, uh, uh, early work ethic. I started at age two as wow. the world's youngest professional ice skater in my father's traveling ice show, which was called Rhapsody on Ice. It was the predecessor for the ice capades. Yeah. And, uh, it, it traveled all across the country and I was in the show. Uh, I don't have too much of a memory of it, uh, I, but I do remember a couple of things that really stand out. For example, I remember the, the tremendous sound from the audiences in these big arenas where you can't really see them because the lights are on the, you know, shining on, on, on me and the other performers uh, in the show. But uh, it, where I am introduced, uh, two of the top skaters come out and they like one holds each hand and we skate around the ring. And still for a two year old, you know, I mean, they're clapping saying, well, that's pretty good. And then they let me go and I skate by myself. And I'm telling you, I can remember the roar of people can't believe a two-year-old. I mean, like my skates, the, the entire length of the skate is five inches. Wow. I mean, the shoe is about two inches. I mean, you know, really small. So uh, that I did that. And then I, I was very fortunate. Uh, my father ultimately sold the show and moved to Beverly Hills. And he became a very prominent real estate broker. And for me growing up, uh, now I didn't have access to Batman comic books. That I never even had heard of a Batman comic book uh, where I lived. There were Superman comic books and Superboy comic books. And uh, I was enthralled with the whole concept of superheroes. And I have photos of me that my mother took. I think I was like three years old, four years old on a tricycle with uh, riding around my tricycle with a bath towel around my neck held together with a clothespin. Uh, but I, I grew up also, I grew up kind of like, um, a, I was a quiet kid, um, very studious, very athletic. I was the top athlete in my elementary school and high school. I was in track, golf, tennis, wrestling, played first board and chess team for Beverly Hills High. Um, so I was very into athletics and stuff, but I was not really a, a social tea biscuit, so to speak. So. Uh, after school, I would come home and for hours and hours and hours, I would like take this ball and, and kick it against the wall and run and kick it and kick it and, and thinking about superheroes. And I really believe that thoughts are things. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I just focused in every moment after school, I was just thinking about this. And here later on, as I was helping my father, by on the weekends, like sitting at these houses, you know, they'd have open house. And of course, my father can't be at all of them. I mean, he had 62 homes that he was was supervising. So I, uh, I, I sat at one of the houses and people would come in. And, you know, if they had a question, they wanted a brochure, I could give them something. And one of the people that came was a producer named Saul David. He had produced the Von Ryan's Express movie, Skullduggery, and another, another uh, other films, very prominent. And I, I was studying acting. I did want to be an actor. I was studying at UCLA where I was attending. I was also studying professionally. There was a, a very well-known method acting coach in Hollywood that I studied with. His name was Eric Morris. And uh, I asked him, you know, kind of like out of the blue, said, you know, I really want to be an actor. And, and I know this is 
probably a very inopportune time because you're looking at this house, but could you do, could you watch a scene if I just did a couple of minutes uh, and to see if you think I have any talent? He said, sure. And I did a scene. He said, you know, pretty good there. He said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to send you to an agent and hopefully they can send you out and you can have a chance to work. I said, well, thank you. So he sent me to an agent that when I went to see the agent, I guess it was a week or two later, the first thing this agent said to me is, I can't get work for the actors I've got. I would never take a new actor. I would, the last thing I would do is have a new actor. So don't expect to work for a year. And I'm only taking you because this producer sent you, you know, to you, to me. And, you know, it's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, and, uh, but he honored that. And, and it was probably another week. I, I got a phone call from someone in his office and said, there's something going over at uh, 20th Century Fox. We have an appointment for you tomorrow afternoon, 4.30. Uh, go over to in West Los Angeles to 20th Century Fox. So the next day I drove over there and they uh, let me park on the lot and they you know, gave me a directory where I, I needed to go to the um, one of the bungalows. And I met a casting director there. Again, I, th nobody said what this was for. I had no idea. They just said, in fact, I, th I think the people at the agency that sent me had no idea what it was for. They just said, <laughs> something's going on over there, right? <laughs> They're looking for young guys. So I met this casting director. He asked me a couple of questions, um, didn't mention anything about the role and said, would you like to meet the executive producer? And not having ever even gone on an interview, I really didn't know what to expect. So when he said, would you like to meet the executive producer? I said, sure. I mean, I figured everybody got to meet the executive producer, but that wasn't the case. I didn't know that at the time, but I, well, that wasn't the case. So uh, I went to another bungalow and uh, uh, I went in to see this executive producer, William Dozier. And maybe because I hadn't been kicked around or rejected and so many actors are I mean, emotionally devastated from being yeah. turned down. I mean, after all, you, it's, you are the product, right? And if they don't like the product, they, like, they don't like you. But I had never been turned down. So I walked in and said, hello, sir, you know, in a kind of aggressive, but friend, very friendly. Uh, you know, and I think he was taken aback that I, you know, was not coming in as this damaged, fearful actor of an executive producer. And he kind of looked at me and said, you know, you're, you're kind of big for this part. And I said, oh, but sir, I promise you, I won't grow anymore. And he laughed, right? I mean, like, how can you control your growth? And we asked me a couple more questions, said, would you like to do a screen test? I said, sure. I mean, after all, didn't everybody get to do a screen test? Right. Well, of course not. But I didn't know that. And it was arranged within about two weeks. I went to do a screen test. And while I was at the screen test, they said, Here is, uh, here is your, your dialogue. And they handed me a single sheet of paper. And on there, there were paragraphs with text. And there was like, Bruce was a name, Dick was a name. There was nothing about Bruce Wayne or Dick Grayson or Batman, just Bruce and Dick. And I was introduced to another actor named Adam West. And this is about 15 minutes before our screen test. And I sat down next to him. Within five minutes, the two of us were laughing. I mean, we just got along so incredibly well. We never stopped laughing for over 50 years, okay? I mean, he was yeah, just the yeah. greatest guy in the world. So we did this, uh, we did this screen test together uh, as Bruce and Dick. Again, had, I had no idea. And they said, okay, that's it. I said, great, thank you very much. And I started to leave. I said, no, no, wait a minute. We're not done with you yet. Uh, we want you to go over to the other side of that sound stage. We have a trailer there, and there's going to be a couple of wardrobe men who are going to help you get dressed. And I said, well, uh, okay. I said, However, I'm perfectly capable of dressing myself. Oh, no, no, no. You don't understand. You just go over there. You'll see. So I walked to this <laughs> other end of the soundstage, which, I mean, seemed like a mile. If These things are gigantic, right? And I, I went in the dressing room. Sure enough, there's these two guys there. And I, and I look, and there's a, like a huge couch or something, but it, without a back. It's just like a giant mattress. But, I mean, it's like eight feet long. And all of this stuff is on this mattress. And I... I said, am I going to put some of this on? And they said, no, actually, you're going to put all of it on. I said, what? <laughs> they helped me get dressed. I won't bore you with the details, but I got to tell you something. The most uncomfortable thing in my entire life, everything was uncomfortable. The, the mask irritated my eyelashes. The, the vest with the wool vest poked into, into my chest. The, the double thick bridal satin cape pulled my <laughs> head back. I mean, the tights, I mean, man was not built for tights, Jeff. So I don't even want to go there. But 
all of this. The boots were too, everything. I mean, I didn't know what hurt the most, right? But see, they and heard I, that you were capable and that's yeah. why. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And, and of course, with a mask on, you can't not, see, you, there's no peripheral vision. You, you can't even see down. And I nearly broke my neck coming out of the trailer. Uh, I can uh, only see straight ahead. But being a positive person, I've always been very positive. I turned to these wardrobe guys and I said, well, you know, the good news here is that after another 15 or 20 minutes, I'll never have to put this costume on again, right? And they laughed, kind of you know, famous last words, right? Famous last words. So then I did the screen test and there I see Adam. And Adam is in this cape and cowl. Again, I had never heard of Batman. So this wasn't like Superman. And I didn't know maybe this is some kind of Shakespearean piece or something. I had no idea what it was, <laughs> okay? And all I know is I left there and I was like more confused than when I arrived. And for the next six weeks- So it was very hush-hush, right? Very like, mm, they couldn't tell you what yeah, it was. Wow. Right, but, but uh, and oh, by the way, in my screen test, they wanted someone who was athletic. So I did some judo and some falls and I broke a board with my hand. I was a brown belt in karate at that time, which is a kind of interesting. Back in 1965, karate had only come to the United States in 1959. And if you mention that word to people, 90% yeah, yeah. of the people never even heard of it. But right. so in any event, I, I left. And for the next six weeks, I after I think it was after the, about 10 days, I started getting a, like one or two weekly phone calls from the from um, the, the studio. And they were asking questions like, well, what's your shoe size? Oh, seven and a half. Well, what's your hat size? Well, I don't wear a hat. Well, go get your head measured. Well, where do I go to get my head measured? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I'm naive about stuff like that. Anyway, after six weeks, I got a call from these same agents and they said, you know, okay, we want you to come in. We're going to sign, a, you know, agreements with you. Oh, that's fantastic. I said, now I'm really going to be represented. So I went to the, to the agency to sign my agency agreements. And when I sat down, I mean, there's this contract that was like, gosh, an inch and a half thick. And, and it said 20th Century Fox. And I said, well, wait a minute, I'm, I'm supposed to sign agency agreements. He said, no, no. No, this is your your studio agreements. I said, you mean I got the role? He said, yeah. You mean the studio didn't tell you? I said, no. And when I finally, a couple of days later, went into the studio, they said, you mean your agents didn't tell you? Mm -hmm. So four of the six weeks that I was waiting, I already had the role, but I didn't know. Wow. So when you realized you got that role, what was that like for you? Well, again, I, I would like to tell you I was jumping up and down, but I wasn't <laughs> because you have to understand if you haven't ever done something like this, yeah. you don't really know what to expect. I will tell you this. When I went in to see the the people, the producers and stuff, mm -hmm. this is probably another week or two after that, uh, that William Dozier walked over to me and said, hello, Bert, you know, uh, congratulations. Would you like to know why we hired you? And I said, oh, yes, sir, I, w I, I really would. He said, in our minds, forgetting television, if there really was a Batman and Robin, I mean, like the real thing, you personally would be, in our minds, Robin. So we don't want you to, quote, act. We want you to be yourself, just as you are. And we want you to be enthusiastic. Well, that's not much of a stretch for me. <laughs> being enthusiastic, right? It was like breathing, right? So... Uh, and, and that's what I did for 120 episodes. And what was so interesting is that uh, last year I got my star in Hollywood Boulevard, which I was incredibly honored. I, I mean, actually, I, I've been hoping and for more than 50 years to get it. I mean, I am a patient person, but, you know, Jim, don't you think 50 years? That's a kind of a long time to wait. I think 50 <laughs> is, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Congratulations, congratulations on that. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and it's customary for people that get, that award that afterwards they throw kind of a party which is you know and, and invites the people from the hollywood chamber of commerce and and the friends and the people in the industry that you know and over the years just kind of a celebration kind of thing and so this was right in front of the guinness museum of world records and right around the corner from hollywood boulevard and, and highland was the hollywood museum and uh, so uh, we had rented out this hollywood museum for for the uh, at this uh, afternoon event uh, which was great because they had a fantastic Batman display, which is amazing, still there. But uh, one of the people that came to the party was a man named 
uh, Bob Butler, Robert Butler, who happened to have been the director of the pilot episode of Batman. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen him in 55 years. And I met him and I said, oh my gosh. And I hugged him and he said, Bert, I have a story to tell you. I said, oh, okay. And and he said, when I was brought on to do the pilot and, and for your viewers, um, the, the whoever directs the pilot, they usually give them extra time, extra resources because the pilot is what really sells the project to a network. So whereas our normal day was like six days to make an episode, this was like three weeks. So, I mean, they really put time and, and money into this. He said, when I came onto the set, the executive producer pulled me aside and said, we've hired this young guy, his name is Burt Ward, and we really don't know if he could do this. I mean, he he's not natural, he seems fine, and, and he's very willing, but we'd like you to kind of maybe pull him aside and talk to him and, and come back and tell us if you think you can work with him. And uh, I mean, I never knew this, but I do remember that first day where the director came over to me and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a director, right? And he said, can I talk to you for a few minutes? And he and I talked and he told me that he went back to the executive producer. He says, I'm not going to direct this young actor to do anything. He is perfect the way he is. And there's, when you've got something that works well, you stay the heck away from it. Okay. So as an example of something that I did, uh, and, and this is on the first episode, this was with uh, Frank Gorshin as the Riddler, Jill St. John as Molly. And there was a scene that uh, Batman and Robin pull up outside uh, this museum. It's, I mean, it's actually a warehouse, but it's a museum. We pulled up outside this museum and, uh, you know, most people, you know, open the door and get out of their car. Well, I often would jump into the car over the door or jump over the door out of the car. But this time, because we were going to be walking to this building, when we stopped, I stood up, stood on the door and walked on that very narrow thin thin uh, to the back of the Batmobile and jumped off. Okay. And they, all of a sudden I hear the director say, cut, cut. Yeah. And he, and he, Bert, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just doing the, the scene. He says, you didn't tell us you're going to do this. We are, we, we're lit and set up for you to come out the door. I said, oh, well, I'm sorry. I just did what I thought was right. He said, well, actually, he said, I love it. But we, none of us ever thought of that. So they took an extra 45 minutes to lay plywood down on the asphalt and, and get there. They have a dolly with, with wheels with a camera on it. And they got to set the track so it's level. Oh, my God. What a thing. And then light it. And oh, my gosh. But they included that in the scene. Now, what I didn't know was that George Barris, who built the Batmobile and two or three of his uh, assistants were there. I mean, believe me with 36 coats of paint on the Batmobile. They are like fearful that anything could go wrong. And here I am on my, with my bat boots walking on that very narrow fin that easily could have been dented or whatever. And I didn't know they were having heart attacks, but the executive producers, as I found out later, would say, don't you dare say anything to this actor. Don't you dare. He's doing just perfect for us. You keep your mouth shut. Don't you dare. Okay. And anyway, it all came out. And then I realized, and, and I got to be friends, you know, with George Barris, a really nice man. Um, and, uh, but anyway, that was like the kinds of things that would happen. And uh, it was yeah. a very exciting show, but it was a dangerous show. I got hurt. I was in, went to the emergency hospital for the first six days of filming with second degree burns, broken nose from a two by four landing. I mean, like, I mm. really wasn't sure I was going to survive the first week, Jim. Mm. What was it like coming down those bat poles? Well, let me tell you something. For the most part, you saw us go in Wayne Manor, right? Where we get a, we, you know, Alfred the Butler comes out and uh, in like one of the first episodes, I'm playing the piano and, you know, uh, Chopin and I'm making it, doing a terrible job of it. And, and anyway, Alfred comes out and says to Bruce Wayne, you know, the bat, you know, the bat phone, sir. And he says, uh, Dick, uh, a fishing trip we were going to go on kind of thing, right? So we run in there and, you know, we uh, lift up Shakespeare's head and turn the and the knob. And then the behind us, the bookcase opens and we run and we slide down. But that's only about 10 feet, which is, I mean, that's high, but that's not really scary. What was really scary, I mean, and incredibly dangerous 
Okay, I could have been killed, or as Adam once said, or worse. Uh, but <laughs> but I, is is that I, we had to go one time and shoot from the top of the of the seven uh, what is it seventy foot soundstage, and yeah. to go up to the top, and they had two poles up there at the top. And you got to understand, you're going up these rickety wood stairs. I mean, to get up there, right? And these are stairs that you can see through, right? I mean, yeah. and you're climbing higher and higher. Okay, there's no rails. You're climbing higher on these stairs and, and you step on them. They're a little bit of give. Oh my gosh, I get to the top. I can't believe I did this. And here about two feet, maybe three feet away from me are the two poles. There was no nets. There was nothing. We were to jump onto the poles. The 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 um, the, the stuntman told us because of the friction coming down, it would just burn through our gloves and our that we had to like when you hold onto the pole, you hold on and then you kind of let go when you hold on. You know what I mean? You kind of slow yourself down. You don't try to because you would get a like an, it burn right through the glove. Um, and the same thing with your boots. So. With my shoes, instead of being flat, I had to use like the inside sole. Uh, you know what I mean? And you, and it's again pressure, slow down, and, and that kind of thing. But if Adam or I had missed that pole, mm. yet, mm. yeah, I mean yeah. seventy feet, yeah. concrete, right? I, I right. can't believe it. And and so, and, and, and you know, all I can tell you is they don't have those kinds of scary things. Well, one more thing I got to tell you: in another episode, there was a scene where I am supposed, as Robin, the bad guys have got me hanging over the top of the soundstage, which is like a, a supposedly a, a you know 50-story building in, in Gotham City, which is New York. So, you know, I mean, here I'm worried. They told me in the morning, Bert, you know, now don't worry about it. These guys are really strong, these stuntmen. They're not going to, you know, drop you, and you have nothing to worry about. But after lunch, we're going to be doing the scene, and we do want you to hang over. You're going to be upside down, and, and you keep in costume, right? I mean, it's hard to function, and you're going to be hanging upside down, but they're going to hold on to you, and, and they've assured us they're not going to drop you. I said, well, you're right. Thank you. Oh, uh, So they happen to have fried chicken for lunch. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sitting through eating my fried chicken wondering, are these guys going to have greasy hands? <laughs> Are they going to let go of me accidentally? I mean, I am fretting this because I'd already gone to the hospital a couple of times in the first episode. So what I did made them do is I got one. They have these big ropes. It's kind of like a ship. You know, they tie a ship to the dock. You want these, you know, huge passenger liner, big, thick rope. They had that on, on the roof of the, of the soundstage. And I tied it around my leg. And I personally wouldn't let anybody else tie it. I tied it around a pole, right? So that, you know, and I was hanging mostly over, but my foot, one, all it was, one foot was still on top of the, uh, on top of the building. The rest, everything else was hanging over. So that if they dropped me, I still wouldn't get killed. But it was that kind of craziness. Yeah. If yeah. I hadn't asked for it, you know, I, right. I'm, something could have happened bad. Really amazing stuff, huh? <laughs> People are loving these stories. I don't think they realize the amount of risk that was actually involved in doing that show, huh? And that was really, the production value was amazing. And it was uh, not the most inexpensive show to do too, right? There was a lot, all the different sets and costuming and just everything, the, the back cave, all of it. Well, and also the crew. I mean, uh, the average crew on a, on a show is about 30 people. They, they had as many as 80 people when they had some of these. Uh, and, and I must tell you something. Getting these special effects to work, like the giant birthday cake, and I mean, all of these special effects, it took the total focus of the director and everybody else there to, to make them work. So what was interesting is that when it came to our dialogue between Adam and I, that other than saying, well, you know, you're in the Batmobile or you're in front of the, uh, the Bat computer or you're outside here, this, whatever it was, we were never directed as to what to say or how to say it. So Adam and I just had this natural rapport, which this chemistry that he and I had together, I really think was one of the reasons the show was so successful because most of these shows, you know, they say, oh, well, no, say the line this way or oh, try to do this or emphasize this and all of that kind of stuff. Adam and I just worked instantly off of each other. And, you know, he liked to be very debonair and yeah. kind of 
you know, thought of himself like Winston Churchill. You know, I mean, <laughs> he had these grand ideas. He once told me there were the three Bs. I said, what are the three Bs? Bond, <laughs> Beatles, and Batman. Oh, you know, then he, then he, well, another time he told me that he really understood what it was like to play Batman when he watched the Ten Commandments, okay? Uh, yeah. He watched the Ten Commandments <laughs> and he saw Moses coming down from the Sermon of the Mount yeah. with, you know what I mean, with the Word yeah. of God. And then he said, you know, he said, I really understood then what it was like to play. I said, oh, my God, Adam. It's, you know, you, yeah. you know, and it's so funny because as big and grand as he was, I was quick and fast and, yeah. and you know, and, and, and of course, what I think makes great comedy is are people that are opposites, you know? Yes. I mean, look at all the great comic duos. They've always been great contrast. Laurel and Hardy, right? Laurel's skinny and kind of weak and Hardy stout and authoritative. You know, Ed McMahon, Johnny Carson, Abbott and Costello. All of the great comic duos in history were had great contrast. So here is Adam... You know, he's like six foot four, and then they had these three inch heels that they put on him, making him <laughs> six foot seven. I'm like only five, seven and a half, but they took off my heels. So I was like almost barefoot, you know, flat on the ground to make me much smaller in relation to him. And, but, but it was this comic, this duo, this relationship yeah. of his high energy and, I mean, my high energy and his very grand, you know, and was that planned or did that develop? And then they noticed that interaction between the two of you and started writing it into the actual scenes uh, because it was spot on. It was absolutely incredible. It, the show was so witty and comical as much as it was, uh, you know, with the dramatic elements of it too. And I thought it was just incredible that camaraderie that the two of you had, everybody on the set, you know, Burgess Meredith, uh, Cesar Romero, all of you, but especially you and Adam. Um, so did, was that something that they, the producers had planned? Okay, well, if we pair these two together, this is gonna happen or did it just happen? And then they worked it into the series because it was so good. They didn't want it to not have, you know, that as part of the show. Yeah, yeah. Well, they they wrote Batman as being, you know, sophisticated and they Robin is young and enthusiastic, but we took it much farther than that. And honestly, they didn't have to write anything special because no matter what you gave Adam, okay, it's gonna come out the same way, right? And and the more you know self-indulgent that he was the faster I talked and the more, I, you know, and, and, and it, they just loved it. I mean, there was, and it, but, but funny things happened. Okay. Like for example, there'd be a two shot where Adam and I are talking as Batman and Robin. And now Adam was very intelligent, very intelligent man. He knew that this was a 30 minute show and the slower he talked, the longer the camera would have to be on him. Right. And therefore the longer the camera's on him, the less it is on everybody else. Right. <laughs> So, so, you know, and, 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 and he would have these paragraphs and he would talk so slow. It's like, oh, I'm going to fall asleep. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and then I would have a short line, like, you're right, Batman, right? Something like that. Yeah. But he wasn't satisfied with just talking slow through his lines. When I would get to my line, like, you're right, Batman, I'd say, you're, yes, Robin. And he would just chomp in on my line. I said, Adam, I have three words. Can I have my three words, please? Oh, Bert, I had to do it. Well, why did you do it? Why, why did you have to do jump on my three words? Oh, because I was motivated by the scene. Oh, ooh. all right. So then, then another thing he would do, and and, and, and he was so I mean, look, he knew exactly what he was. This man was so sharp. He was like a razor, so sharp. He and I would be doing a scene, and right in our two shot, he would turn. And he would walk right up to the camera and he would fill his face so much in the camera. You didn't even see his mask. All you saw was his mouth full screen. They say, Adam, cut. whoa, what are you doing, Adam? This is a two shot. Oh, I had to do it. Why, Adam? Oh, because I was motivated by the, the scene and this and that. You always had an excuse, yeah. you know. Yeah. 
I loved him. You can't help but love Adam. You know, he's the most lovable guy in the world, but mischievous. Like, oh, you just can't believe how mischievous he is. But we had the best time. We were friends. I mean, even though we'd work like 12 and 14 hour days once in a while on a on a weekend, we'd go out and play tennis. And, you know, it was so funny. We'd go to a public court. And of course, we're not in costume. We're in regular clothes. But people the next court would be looking and they're kind of like, hmm. And then all of a sudden, somebody say, Oh my gosh, it's Batman and Robin playing tennis. Oh, you know, that kind of thing, right? That, that, <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> that is funny. And then you had so many other people, like I mentioned, Cesar Romero and just some really uh, phenomenal people that were a part of this series, Burgess Meredith. I mean, what was it like for you working with some of these other already established legends in Hollywood. You know, I was like the kid in the candy store where every every guest villain, okay, was like somebody I'd either watched on television or seen in a movie. I mean, I was thrilled to meet all of them. I, I remember um, that some of them were like, uh, uh, <laughs> were, were different than I what I expected to see on screen, you know, uh, like Vincent Price, I remember as a child, I watched The Raven, which, oh, just frightened me to death. And and I got to be honest with you, when I heard he was going to play Egghead and he was going to come on the set, I was like, oh, you know, geez, you know, oh my gosh. And yet he came on the set and, and for that moment, I had that kind of a butterfly in the stomach. And yet I met him, nicest guy in the world. And I mean, and I just had a great time. In fact, there were so many celebrities that wanted to be on the show. Because when it's funny, in Hollywood, if something is hot, everybody wants to be a part yeah. oh my gosh the, the studio was flooded with requests from every major actor to be on the show and yeah, other and yeah. celebrity or other personality and so what they did because there was only you know one villain a week except maybe the last season they brought there was a combination of two but still that's you know one or two a week that doesn't cut it for all the people who wanted to be on so they created the scene of walking up the side of the building where a window would open and a celebrity would open the window. And the very first one was Sammy Davis Jr. And then there was Jerry Lewis, Don Ho, Colonel Clink, Lurch, <laughs> Dick Clark, Betty White. I mean, you know, just all these people and and everybody and their kids were driving them crazy to be on the show. It was such a cool thing. I mean, you have to understand, our show was number one and number two in the entire world. There were more than 400 million people a day when Batman would come on that were watching. 400 million people. And and as a result of that, you know, uh, it was phenomenal. I, I remember when Adam and I, when the, the movie was coming out and uh, it was set up for us to go to New York. There was a bus that was going to take us to 36 theaters in three days. We we're dressed as costume. There were 17 police on the bus and anywhere from 150 to 200 police at each one of these theaters. And the whole idea was they're showing the Batman movie. We would come in and, and come out from behind the screen and they'd stop the movie and we'd say hello. And oh my gosh, but it was so incredibly crazy crowds with all these police. They're still pushed. My costume was torn like three times. You, you just can't believe how many people it, it, you know what I mean? I mean, women were having Batman hairstyles. I mean, kids were, you know, putting towels around their neck and jumping off their couches. And, and yeah, I mean, everybody wanted to be involved with Batman. Absolutely. And there were action figures and lunch boxes and like uh, the pinball machine too, right? I mean, all these incredible things that sort of resulted from all of this. What was that like? I mean, you, you sort of, you know, merchandised everywhere and everybody wanted a piece of it. The pinball machine was amazing. And I hear Well, that actually, I, I have a pinball story for you. Yeah. Um, uh, the Batman pinball machine, um, Stern Pinball, who made the machine, came to Adam and I and asked us to each do 300 voices recordings, 300 separate recordings of us, you know, uh, holy this or whatever, uh, that they incorporated in the pinball machine. And uh, I purchased one for, uh, for, for my wife, Tracy and I, and as a, as a special surprise for her, okay, 
I uh, recorded a special thing that is only on our pinball machine. You know, uh, I don't know if you'd like to hear it, but yeah. if you'd like to hear it, I'll, I'll play it. And uh, because uh, it was it was a kind of special thing. Yeah. Turn it on, Tracy. Yeah, my wife's going to turn it on. And uh, and then, uh, yeah, under the top there. Yeah. OK, turn that on. Right. And then when it comes on, come around to the left side of it and press the red button on the left side. Well, once it there, there it is. It's on. Hun. It's on. So, OK. And then you'll hear this special message. No, but I've never played this for anybody. But you're such a nice guy and we're Thank having you. such a good time. And you've got yeah. these lovities. Yes. Okay. Lovities. Well, why not hear some lovity message here? OK. Perfect. All right. So here we go. Listen. Oh, wait a minute. Did, did you press the, the red button? I did. Oh, my gosh. Great Scott. <laughs> Great Scott. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to come on. I hope they haven't updated it and taken away my message. Press the right button and then, okay. For my darling Tracy, this is your husband, Bird, who loves you very much. And this pinball game is for you. Mwah. Uh, did you could you hear it <laughs> yeah it was in the distance but that is that's what i you know <laughs> kind of like the dinosaur what <laughs> there you go there you go <laughs> that is fantastic that is really really cool <laughs> there's the, the, all right crazy that's fine that was adam in the back of press it one more time on the right on the left. see yeah so, oh okay all right Tracy. My, my, my wife could be like a child. She'll we, just keep we, uh, we thank and love Tracy very much for being the associate producer tonight. There you go. <laughs> the audience is saying how awesome and very cool. And I love pinball machines. And um, let's see. Was it intentional that Batman's pole was bigger than Robin's? Uh, I think, you know, well, the whole idea was, the idea was, you have to understand, the concept of the bat poles was that that we could jump on the poles, right, and in our civilian clothes, right. slide down the poles and get dressed while we're sliding down. And when we <laughs> landed, we come out as Batman and Robin. And, and I'll tell you some people, but, you know, kids would ask me, well, how do you do that? I mean, you know, adults <laughs> would ask me. How, how can you slide down that pole and come up? I said, well, we actually had a wardrobe man who slid down the pole behind us and helped us get dressed. And help you get dressed. <laughs> Another question came in here. Austin Field asked, when you guys played tennis, who would win the tennis matches, Batman or Robin? <laughs> or was it well, even? You know, it, it, it'd be a little bit even, but being very fast, okay, yeah. you know, I, I would hit it and make him run. He didn't like that. <laughs> You're supposed to hit it back to me, Bert. I said, no, I'm supposed to hit it where you have to run and get it. That's it. Kim wants to know, did you have a favorite villain? You, can I tell you, um, I loved working with every one of these actors and actresses. I mean, there were so many great actors. And I mean, uh, like Cliff Robertson was Shame, which yeah, was a takeoff yeah. in the old Shane. And, uh, and, and, and there was just, just so many, you know, I mean, the famous old actress, I'm sure none of your listeners had ever heard of, but if they did some research, a very famous actress was named Tallulah Bankhead. Oh, sure. And yeah. White Black Widow. And George Raft was one of the original bad guys in the old movies in the 30s and 40s. And he was in that in that show. I mean, we just had so many different great, wonderful actors and actresses. You know, Milton Berle was Louis the Lilac. Uh, um, you know, <laughs> I mean, just so many different actors and actresses that he was, I, again, I was the kid in the candy store yeah. that every week I got to work with somebody that I'd seen on TV or watched in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, actually Gary actually asked, asked about, about uh, uh, Lovity Burke. Burke. Uh, what was it like going down the bat poles and then changing into your outfit by the time you get down, you know, to the bottom of the bat cave? <laughs> that is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then there was one thing in the Batman movie where, you know, people say, well, how do you get back up? To, to the cave from the, I mean, you know, from, from the cave up to the, to, to Wayne Manor. And there was a scene where uh, Batman, he stands on it, presses a button and that hydraulic lift lifts him straight back up uh, into Wayne Manor. What was it like in that cave? Boy, they, it looks like they spared no expense when they created that set, huh? 
$800,000 in 1966. That's wow. what they spent. 800. That's like $8 million. Yeah. Now in today's world. That's it was, incredible. it was really spectacular. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, it was, it was just beautiful. I mean, it was phenomenal. Mm. And, uh, the network was behind the show. Everybody, you know, was excited about the show. Um, uh -huh. That's great. That's fantastic. Oh, well, let me tell you about the network. At the time, ABC was a syndicated uh, syndicator. They weren't even a network. There was really only two networks at the time, real formal networks. That was CBS and NBC. But between Batman and Bewitched, the enormous success of our two shows made ABC the third network. Mm. Okay. And that was such a big deal to them. Um, actually, there was a, you know, we had a, a it's called a hiatus where you're, you know, you're, you take a break from filming, you know, because we right. film most of the year, but we had a three month hiatus. And uh, just to give you an idea how, how important Batman was to ABC, that there was a young producer at 20th Century Fox. His name was Larry Turman. And he came to me. Well, I was doing Batman. He said, Bert, I know you've got a hiatus coming up and I got a, a small film here at Fox, but I'd love you to be in it. I'd love you to star in it. I said, oh my gosh, that would be fantastic. And, you know, I thought about it and I said, well, I mean, this is the same studio, right? I mean, it's not like some competing studio. This mm -hmm. is still 20th Century Fox. And actually Fox was fine with it. But ABC at the last minute said, no, we don't want him to do any other roles Batman is the biggest hit in the world. We don't want any dilution of him playing another role when we've got him as Robin. So I had to turn the role down and I was saddened by it. Uh, by the way, the movie was called The Graduate. You might have heard with Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman yeah. They couldn't get me and they got Dustin Hoffman. He did a great job. But that just shows you that, uh, you know, you can win some and you can lose some. Yeah, what a story that is. That's amazing, Bert. God, a couple more questions that are coming in here too. Uh, Chris, who's watching in Northern Ireland says, question for Bert, uh, what was Bruce Lee like to work with in the Batman Green Hornet crossover episode? Well, I have a whole story about Bruce Lee. He and I actually were friends. We lived in the same complex, um, okay, at the time I was shooting Batman and uh, I was brown belt, uh, later became a black belt, and, you know, he was probably the most famous uh, martial artist in cinema the world has ever known or, or will ever be, in my opinion. And um, we used to spar together. We actually would fight, you know. We pulled punches because they that's the way you do in practice. But, but the point of it is I sparred with him, and um, the same executive producer, William Dozier, that was producing Batman, produced the Green Hornet. And he was hired to play Cato in the Green Hornet. And because that was going to air prime time on ABC the next fall, that he, William Dozier arranged to have the Green Hornet and Cato on one of our episodes. Here we are, the number one show in the world, okay, twice a week. So, and that was a two-parter for them to be on. And, uh, but Bruce and I were friends. And actually, uh, I remember, one of the memories I have is that, uh, uh, he, this is at the time when his, uh, he was, Linda was his wife and Brandon, his son was only six months of age. And I remember going down to Chinatown where the, uh, we all went for dinner there. And because Bruce had lived in Hong Kong for 10 years, he knew all the most authentic stuff to, to order and stuff, but it was really, you know, it was really very special, but the piece of trivia that your audience might like to know is that Bruce Lee's first filmed fight scene of his career in cinema was fighting me on Batman. It was the very first one. That's so nice. that's a piece of trivia. And uh, he was a great guy, amazing martial artist. He trained eight hours a day. It could have been Christmas day and he trained eight hours a day. He was just, and, and just really a natural, you know, he was so natural at it that, and, and he just, he, if you do something eight hours a day, it's like us with these dogs for 26 years, having more than 50 dogs live in our house. Yeah. People say, well, how can you know so much about dogs? And well, my God, you're coming out my ears. You know, I, <laughs> and so I see, you know, and it, you just, if you do something all the time, you get good at it. Right, exactly. Uh, 
any favorite episode? Is there one that really stands out for you, Bert, as your personal favorite? Really, no, because every one there was something unusual that we had to do, and the and these writers were constantly coming up. Well, what can be the most you know dangerous thing to happen, Batman yeah, or Robin, yeah. in this episode? And there was always, I mean, there was always something that was about to outdo the next one, and um, and and we had a great time. You know, it was a, it was a really spectacular show, and Adam and I got along so well. I mean, it 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 was really and and he, and here's the interesting thing: the crew. It didn't matter if you're the cameraman. I mean, they did things like on the villains hideouts, they always turn the, the camera. They shot it everything at an angle. And I remember asking the camera, you, you got a problem leveling your camera? <laughs> no, bird. We do it on purpose. Well, why would you shoot at an angle? Yeah. Because the villains are crooked. So therefore <laughs> the angle, had, I mean, in other words, everybody from the lighting guys to the camera people to everybody that was part of that crew added their creativity to make Batman special. And by the way, every actor that came on our show, they went crazy because in other roles, they would be limited to just that character. But yeah. on yeah. Batman, the whether Cesar Romero is the Joker, Burgess Meredith is the Penguin, Frank Gorshin is the Riddler, Julie Newmar is the Catwoman, all these actors, they could be big and broad and be just the ultimate villain. Right, yeah. <laughs> and for an actor, the opportunity to make something really big was just totally captivating to them. Yeah, <laughs> I, I tell you, they really did nail it too. All of you did. The cast, you guys, just worked so beautifully. Um, somebody also asked, and this is a cool question too. And as far as stunt men, how many stunt men actually worked on the sets? Uh, there were quite a few, and now Adam and I each had a a stunt man, but um, there was a problem with my stunt man, a wonderful guy. Uh, the, it, and let me just tell you, it happened the first day, the first mm -hmm. scene, my first shot on Batman, Bronson Canyon up in the Hollywood Hills. This is the famous scene where the Batmobile is going to come out of the Batcave, you know, comes racing out, makes that sharp left turn. The sign goes down and then pops up and says Gotham City, 14 miles. Okay, so here I'm in makeup and wardrobe. I had to be there at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. We're going to start shooting. And I, I got in my costume. They say, Bert, now you got to go up and get in the cave here that we got the Batmobile waiting for you. Yeah. And uh, you're going to get in and you guys are going to drive out at very fast. And as I found out later, 55 miles an hour. And, and when you're going on dirt, I mean, they, and they have to make turns. I mean, the car is supposed to skid around and all this stuff. So I go up there and I go in the dark. And it's, it's kind of hard to see, you know, you've, you've been out in the light and now you go in the plate and I'm kind of like, well, where's the Batmobile? And I kind of find my way and I get in the Batmobile and I look over and, and I thought it was Adam. I said, Adam, he said, no, I'm Hubie. I said, Hubie, well, what are you doing here? He said, I'm a stunt man. I said, oh, well, why are you here? He said, because this is a very dangerous stunt and the studio doesn't want to take a chance of Adam West getting hurt. I said, well, that's a great idea. And then I said, well, wait a minute, are you dangerous? Oh, Absolutely. I said, oh, why is it so dangerous? Well, we got to come out at 55 miles an hour. Got to make a sharp left turn. I've got to skid the back of the Batmobile around. It's got to stay on its mark. And I got to race down, you know, the, the, the hill towards Gotham City. I said, oh, okay. And I, and, he, and I said, geez, do you like being a stop man? He said, oh, it's great. He says, the more broken bones I get, the more money I make. And I start to sit there kind of like saying to myself, wait a minute. <laughs> And I said, well, do I have a stunt man? He said, oh, yeah, you do. I said, well, that's great. Where is he? Oh, last time I saw him, he was having coffee with Adam West. And I hear him say, roll it up. Get ready to shoot. I said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait, whoa, wait. There's a terrible mistake here. They come running up. Bert, what's the problem? I said, this is a stunt man. He's telling me this is a very dangerous shot. Yeah, yeah, we know that. I said, yeah, but he's telling me that 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 I have a stunt man, but he's drinking coffee with Adam West. He said, well, he may be. I said, yeah, but why isn't he here instead of me? Oh, we can't use him. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Why can't you use him? Well, he doesn't look like you. He doesn't look like me. Oh, well, well, why would you hire him to be my stunt man? He doesn't look like me. Couldn't find anybody else. Oh. And Bert, you're going to be right up that, your face is going to be a foot and a half from that camera when he slides in with the back end of the Batmobile. It, we, everybody's going to know it's you. <laughs> like, oh, okay. So he's all right, you know. And so 
the stuntman, Hubie says to me, hold on. I said, okay. So I, wait a minute, there's no seatbelt. No seatbelt. Okay, well, wait a minute, put my hand on the handle. The, no, no handle for the door. What, what am I going to hold on to? There's this eighth of an inch thick flexible plexiglass as, as a windshield, right? I mean, holding on to it is like, holding on like to a piece of thin cardboard. Yeah. I mean, it's more, much more flexible than the cardboard. And I'm going to hold on to this. And, and, and it's like, I don't have a choice. And, and it's, you, you don't, you're caught up in it, right? Well, anyway, we come out at 55 miles an hour. This is day one, first shot. And the stunt man, you know, perfect perfect timing. Everything was great. He slid the, made that sharp left turn and the car slid around, but unexpectedly mm. my door flew open. Oh, wow. It was not supposed to happen. When my door flew open, it knocked the cameraman off his camera truck, a truck as well as his assistant. Okay. Mm. And he was knocked down. The camera was knocked off a giant arc lamp, which is what they use to light. I mean, today they have cool lights. Those things are so heavy. If it had landed, somebody would have killed him. And I was thrown to the door opening. And just as a reaction, I threw my arm, my left arm behind me and somehow my pinky finger wrapped around the gear shift knot and and it kept me from falling off uh, falling out but it took my finger out of joint which was so incredibly painful you know and and anyway so now there's a dust all over the place because remember on dirt and they, and they they coming through bird are you okay okay i said yeah but my hand is killing me and even with my glove on my finger was twice the size already just after like a few few seconds and they said we got to get you to hospital i said okay and they helped me out of the batmobile and I said, well, okay, well, where's the car going to take me to the hospital? Oh, we can't take you to the hospital now. <laughs> no, no, we didn't get the shot. <laughs> oh, that was at 730 in the morning. I ended up leaving for the hospital at noon. I had oh. to do the shot three more times, the <laughs> same shot. Okay. And, and, you know, so that you was, are a professional. that was the beginning of that's this. The day, that's, that's the taste of what was to come. And so now people, when they watch Batman, they'll have a deeper appreciation for what Burt Ward and crew went through to provide oh, yeah. the solid entertainment for all of us. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it, 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 so many things, you know, but still it's one of these love hate relationships. You still love the show. It's fantastic. The costume's a nightmare. The danger is everywhere, right? And yet you can't help but love it because everybody loved it. You have to understand we were in people's homes. You know, I mean, we were like seven o'clock right after dinner. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. had their dinner. Now they're sitting in the living room, the whole family. And here comes Batman and Robin into their living room. And when I would meet people and for all these years, there's a special warmth because you know, the adults of today were the kids of yesteryear, and they remember that time when Batman and Robin were in their living room. You know, yes. so yeah. it, it, uh, it's it's been wonderful, and fans are wonderful. And, you know, everybody loves it. I've been, I think, I've been asked uh, about um, at least a million times, "Where's Batman?" You know what I mean? Of course, I say he's out chasing Catwoman. He's you know <laughs> not on her trail. Uh, but, uh, but, but you know, so many different things. And, you know, the whole Batman thing was like this uh, campy style. You know, you say things, and uh, but you never really know if it's exactly right or you're being put on. We used to say we put on our tights to put on the world. I mean, and we had <laughs> funny things happen. Jim, like, for example, we're outside. We're chasing these villains down the street, you know, okay? And they cross the street, and I run across, and Batman says, no, Robin, you must use the crosswalk. <laughs> oh, right. So now we have to use the crosswalk. Well, I mean, they're like four blocks away by the time we get across the crosswalk. I mean, it's that kind of craziness that people just loved. Yeah. yeah. I remember so well, too. It used to follow, I think, in New York, Batman followed this guy, Gilligan. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Gilligan's, I yeah. Gilligan's Island. Or was it possibly following I Dream of Genie? Oh, there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> or maybe it followed George and Gracie, maybe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he never appeared on the show, huh? George Burns. No, huh? no. I, I would have loved for him to have appeared on the show. It would have been 
It oh, that would have been. Or it might have followed uh, Lucy and Ricky, maybe. Oh, I love yes, Lucy. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, oh, those are, those are all the greatest shows. Those are wonderful shows. I love them all, every one of them. Uh, how does it feel when you think about it? You mean, these shows have not only stood the test of time, and Batman, of course, right up there, you know, on that uh, list. Um, now, like, people are really craving nostalgia. So you have Antenna TV, Cozy TV, Me TV, Decades Network, all of these nostalgic television networks that have been created, which I love. I think they're fantastic. And they're bringing back sort of these retrospectives and binging on some of the real classic nostalgic sitcoms and dramas and, and more. Um, that's pretty cool and amazing, isn't it? It is, you know, and I think it is a desire to get back to a simpler time. You know, you might call it a lovety time yeah, where, yeah. where, where our world wasn't so complex and, and there wasn't so much bitterness and there's so much strife and so much conflict and, and, and everybody's at each other's throats and all of this kind of stuff. No, there, there people, you know, I mean, like, like one of my pet peeves are, are the news, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wonderful if you had like the real news where, I mean, like the old Walter Cronkite, I mean, like the father of the news and you would get the news just like what the news was. Straightforward. Be a slant this way or a slant that way. It would be the news because that's why people are watching. And yet in today's world, everybody's got an angle or a thing to push or to this or to that. And it's, um, I think people want a simpler time you know, and that's what, I mean, Batman right in the sixties, that's the, the flower children, you know, free love. And, you know, it was just like, uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, and I, and, and in a way, like for my kids, you know, I wish they had grown up in that time. I mean, I love that time. It was, a, it was wonderful. Are any of your kids in the industry? Uh, not yet. We, I, we, I have, Two children, okay, and uh, and let me tell you something. I love my my human children. I love them so very much. But I also love my canine kids as well. Yes. And I will have to say one positive thing about canine kids: of the fifteen thousand five hundred dogs that have lived in our home the last twenty six years, not one, Jim, not one has ever asked me to buy him a car. <laughs> Or an iPod or any of that, right? <laughs> no, but I, I love my kids, and, and we're very fortunate to, uh, you know, have a wonderful life. And Tracy's a fantastic mother, you know, and and, and we just we really, uh, I mean, look, we have love animals. Here you have that's a great photo. You have like what three cats and a dog together, and two birds, one on my shoulder, one on my head, and every all of our animals live communally together in harmony yeah harmony yeah what isn't that a wonderful concept that's right exactly tell us about this this is an amazing thing that you do the rescuing as well as having uh the the pet products and, and the entire company surrounded around that tell us a little bit about that and how you included that into your already busy life because it really is a beautiful story well, you know, it's like I like to say that I was the Cape Crusader and now I am the Canine Crusader. Right. Uh, and, now, and well, now I've become the Cat and Kitten Crusader. So it's it's all. But how it all started was the fact that when um, Tracy and I had our daughter, Melody, um, here we were living at the beach. Uh, we were a block from the beach. Beautiful, fantastic home, four stories high, overlooking the ocean. But we had all these balconies and <laughs> what, you know. 30, 40, 50, 60 feet up. And, you know, that's not the best place for a child learning to walk to go out <laughs> on these balconies, right? Right. So we decided, you know, let's, let's, and 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 it's so funny because in California, the property values at the beach are, I mean, they're insane. I mean, we had a, a 4,000 square foot house on a 2,400 square foot lot. I mean, like five feet on three sides and 15 feet in the front. So we thought, you know, we're going to bring up our child my other daughter had has was already grown grown Lisa and and let's move out to you know maybe a little east of Los Angeles and you know somewhere have a little more property and and, and can grow up as a child and, you know and maybe have some animals and stuff like that. So uh, we moved to our present location. Uh, it's it's called Norco, California. It's the last 
Western town in America where horses have the right of way over cars, where, yeah, yeah I mean, this is true Americana, you know, like you see the dotted white line in, in the road. Well, here we have dotted red, white, and blue lines. I mean, it's like all American. And even the, the commercial businesses have to have a Western theme. Every business has to have a horse tie up. For, and, and I mean, there are thousands of horses here. Uh, you know, people riding all the time. It, it's just a wonderful atmosphere. Anyway, we moved here and we thought, well, wouldn't it be great to get a dog for our daughter to grow up with? And so um, my wife, Tracy, had grown up with Irish wolfhounds. Uh, I had had all different kinds of dogs, but I had never had a, a Great Dane. And we, so we both decided, well, let's see if we can find a, a, a giant breed dog for, for us to, to join our family with our daughter. And so we we started kind of putting the feelers out and we heard about a few dogs that needed to be rescued. And we really didn't know too much rescue. What, what, what does rescue mean? Well, it basically means where somebody has had a dog and they have to give it up. Uh, I mean, I mean, that's usually the situation. And if it goes to the shelter, it's going to get put to sleep. So rescue is the one that comes in and takes the dog. It's the interim before going to the shelter and then finds a loving home for that dog. So we rescued um, a, a Great Dane, and then we rescued a second one. And then we figured the other ones weren't in danger because all the ones that we had heard of were in people's homes. You know, they weren't in a shelter where there was an immediate potential, you know, of, of, of the dog being, because there's not enough room in shelters for, for all the animals. Well, a month goes by and we find out that the ones that we didn't take from people's homes were ultimately given to shelter and put to sleep. And we said, my God, these gentle giants, these giant dogs, they're so gentle. In fact, honestly, Jim, the bigger they are, the more gentle they are. Mm. But what, why, what, what, what a terrible injustice. And we found out that rescues, people that rescue dogs, and it's usually a, a husband and wife or, or sometimes a, a single person rescuing dogs. And it's a kind hearted person. They might have two or three or maybe four or five dogs, but but the point of it is they're they're there to save their life and 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 rescues are breed specific so there is a chihuahua rescue there's a german shepherd rescue there is a you know a, a terrier rescue there's a golden retriever rescue and there was a great dane rescue until the lady who was rescuing for all of southern california herself had died we didn't know this so when we found this out this is the first week in august of 1994 I said to my wife, Tracy, I said, we can't let these dogs die. I mean, they're all going to die. These big, beautiful, you know what I mean? They're so loving. Why don't we just for a couple of weeks, let's just take them all. You know what I mean? And we'll find somebody else to take this over, right? We'll find somebody, but let's save their life. Well, it's been more than a couple of weeks, Jim. It's been 26 years and we're still looking for that person to come take the rescue over. But by the end of August of 1994, when we started taking, you know, here and there and here and there, 102 full-size Great Danes, 102 <laughs> of these giant dogs in our house, plus seven litters of puppies, 62 puppies under six, uh, under six weeks of age. And my wife, Tracy, was going crazy because you've got to make sure that they nurse with the mother. And when the mother stands up, a Great Dane is so big. If it stepped on a puppy, the puppy's gone. Got to make sure where they step and this and then help her get outside and then take the puppies and incubate them in a warm area until they're feeding a few hours later. And then comes the next litter. Well, by the time she got finished with the seventh litter, it was time to start the first one again. <laughs> she wasn't getting any sleep. And, and Tracy traditionally only sleeps like a couple hours a night. It's very rare that only two hours a night she sleeps. She wasn't getting the two hours and she's sleeping on our kitchen floor. Well, I mean, thank goodness after a few months, the puppies are old enough that, you know, but it, that kind of experience and it kept growing and growing. And we first, we were a great Dane rescue and a lot of people say, Oh, you're the great Dane rescue. Well, what happened was people would come by and they say, here's my great Dane. And I, Oh, um, I guess here's my Mastiff. Um, I guess I have to take him to the shelter and they'll put him to sleep this afternoon. And I'd look at that dog and say, no, leave him here. You leave him here. And then there was the little dogs. Well, I'll leave him here. And, you know, it's so funny because now my wife, Tracy, has redefined the term Great Dane. If it has 
four legs and a tail. It must be a Great Dane, right? <laughs> so we have 45 <laughs> different breeds here. <laughs> now, why did we get into making dog food? Well, I'll tell you. Giant breed dogs traditionally have a very short lifespan. Yeah, yeah. Mastiffs and Irish wolfhounds, their normal lifespan is only six to eight years. Great Dane, seven to nine years. And we were adopting them right and left, but not every dog got adopted. And when we would lose one, oh my gosh, we, we would sob. It just tore us apart. It is just tore us apart. And we vowed if we could find a way, we'd help them live longer. Well, because we had so many in our home, and this is like a full-time job. It's not like a, you know you have time to go out and socialize. I mean, you, you're just, everywhere you go, in your house, every room in your house, there's these dogs. You have a right? cast of so thousands. And, and everyone <laughs> wants their, they want their love. They want their moment of, of affection, right? And hugging, kissing all day long, all night long, right? Anyway, so what what happened was is that we – we we first came up with a feeding and care program. In other words, we saw by the way we were caring for the dogs, if we did certain things and fed them many times a day, smaller, more frequent meals, and elevated their food and water dishes so it cut down on the up and down of prematurely wearing their body up, we saw that we got tremendous results. And we added, we started keeping track of everything. And, and within a year, we had dogs that were living three years more than their average lifespan. So Great Danes that were live seven to nine years were living 10 to 12 years. And we thought, wow, this look, I mean, even that is fantastic, right? To get yeah, three yeah. more years of life. Absolutely. And then we said, is there anything else we can do? And we thought about it. I said, well, you know, we can afford it. Let's go out for our rescue dogs. We weren't thinking about selling anything. You, you, you got a hundred dogs in your house, right? You, you have no life other than caring for these dogs. And so, uh, so we said, okay, let's, let's, let's go out and make the finest food in the world. We can afford it. Let's make the best of the best. And maybe, 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 maybe we could pull out another year or a year and a half or maybe even two years. So we went to like four of the top people we could find, nutritionists, pet nutritionists. And something we found out changed our life, Jim, forever. I mean, it has changed our life. Here's what we found out. We found out that companies that make pet food know something the average person doesn't know, which is the more fat content they put into the food, the hungry it makes the animal. Hunger, hunger, hunger. The more hungry, the more food, the more food they eat, the more you have to buy. And and then, then we started really looking at ingredients. And, and Tracy went and researched every ingredient in dog food. She says, there's some con controversial ingredients here. And when we, yeah. we went to have it made, we had a hard time. Nobody wanted to make the food for us. They said, oh, no, everybody uses this ingredient. Yeah. Well, yeah, but yeah. it's controversial. Well, everybody uses it. Well, we're not going to use it, right? And so, and then we didn't put all this fat in the food. And I tell people, if you really want to understand how we can have dogs living to 27 years and cats to 32 years, if you want to understand how we do it, Go get a few kibbles of the food that you're feeding your dog or cat. Rub those kibbles in your finger. Then put the kibbles down. Rub your fingers together. You're going to feel a slightly greasy feeling. It's not dripping, but it's it's greasy. What is that? It's animal fat mm -hmm. that has been sprayed onto the food for one purpose, to make your pet eat more. Okay? What an unconscionable thing to do. So people say, well, how can it be so bad that – our dogs are living seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years maybe, and your dogs are living to 27. I mean, how could that be such a huge difference? Well, think of it this way. Would any of your viewers take a can of bacon grease or chicken fat and pour it down their garbage disposal at home? Oh, absolutely not. No way. Because they know that unlike water that evaporates, animal fat coagulates. And when it hardens, it's like cement. And right, if you took right. a can of bacon fat, pour it down your garbage disposal, you wait four or five hours, guess what? It's going to be like cement and you're going to be buying a new garbage disposal. So right, what's my right. point? The point is when you realize that animal fat will ruin a metal garbage disposal, what do you think is happening to your watchers, arteries and, and intestines of their dogs and cats that they love so much when every single day, every single meal, every single bite, every single kibble, 
is encapsulated in animal fat. Mm. It's mm. killing them, in my opinion. It's killing them. Yeah. That's yeah. one thing. There's another thing. You know, we hear about genetically modified organisms in food. To give you an example, let's take rice, for example. 98% of the rice in America, and it doesn't matter which kind you get, 98% has genetically modified organisms in the rice. Only 2% has GMO free. Okay, and what's the big deal about that? Well, think of it this way. Why, why are, are there genetically modified organisms in plants? Well, because when people would go to grow the rice and pest would attack it, and then they spray pesticide on it, the plant would die. Right. So by engineering that the plant would survive the pesticide, it did survive and you got rice. But what was absorbed into the plant was the pesticide. Dogs and cats are inferior in design to a human being. We're much better designed than they are. I mean, I wish it weren't that way, but it is. That's why we live so much longer. Their bodies are much more sensitive to these carcinogens that are in like Roundup and stuff like that. There's these GMOs, this, you know, all, all this stuff that is in, in you know, that, it, that is in the plants. So the long and short of it is on our website at gentlegiantsdogfood.com. I invite your watchers if they want to really go learn and see how we do this, okay, how we have them living so long, which is three things, how you care for your dog, how you feed your dog, and what you feed. But <clears throat> there's a video on that special feeding care program page that was that we we didn't create it. it. We took it off a site that focuses on research on genetically modified organisms. And what was so entertaining to us is that this was interviews of all these veterinarians from all over the United States and from the UK. And these vets were interviewed about about their patients. And here's what they almost everyone said the same thing, which is 10, 15, 20 years ago, they would see one patient a month that had cancer. Mm -hmm. Now Every single day, one out of every two patients they inspect or in, in, you know, in, in, they, they examine has cancer. It's killing all of our pets, mm. genetically modified organisms. We have no genetically modified organisms in our food. I don't know if anybody else is like that. It costs us twice as much to make a food that has, because there's only 2% <laughs> of, 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 of plants that are grown, 98%'s got it in there. It's hard to find that 2%. So Somebody's that's there. what we've yeah. done. We made a cat food and our dog food. Our cats are living to 32 years, not everyone, but up to 32 years, our dogs, almost every dog we have, almost every single one has doubled its average lifespan, okay? And then we have ones like Tara, a Russian wolfhound, supposed to live seven to nine years. She lived 27 and a half years. She was four times her normal lifespan. And mm. people say to me all the time, well, yes, Bert, but the, you have to start them as a puppy, right? I say, no. And in the case of Tara, a Russian wolfhound, mm -hmm. we took her out of a shelter when she was 12 years old. She'd been turned in because they said, she's going to die anytime. We don't want her dying in our house. She's so old. She can barely move. We took her out of the shelter. We put on her a food. She, after a few months, she was came back to being a normal dog, and she jumped and played with her best friend until she was twenty seven and a half years of age. In fact, oh, wow. the TV series Inside Edition came out to our home. They'd heard about Tara. They videotaped her at 25. She was 25 or 25 and a half at the time. And the title of their segment was, could this be the oldest living pooch in the world? Okay. And absolutely, these dogs are so loving and, 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 and they're so healthy. And in the case of our dogs, they have such a quality of life. It's not just living longer. It's being able to run around and be active and to be healthy. And, and our dogs here, it, it's amazing. They're so healthy. The only time our dogs go to a veterinarian is almost every three years for a $10 rabies update. Wow, that's, that's it. That's it. And, and I must tell you something. All your watchers and viewers out there, if you have a pet, you know how expensive you know, pet care has become with vets. I mean, oh, yeah. vets are almost priced to the, like that of a human doctor would price things. Yeah. So these are what, and, and all of this is our charity. We don't take any salary from this. We, we love animals. We're not trying to sell more dog food. We're trying to keep dogs and cats 
alive longer. And yeah, you know, the yeah. only complaint, Jim, I do get one complaint. I got to share this with you. I, you know, there, you are, there I am, right? Look at that. That's when I was shooting Batman. And there I am. Look at those cats. I had four of them. I actually had 18 in my, in my apartment at the time, but there's four in my lap right there. I'm studying my script. You know, there is right. I mean, the same time I'm shooting Robin, um, but, but <laughs> you know, the, the, it is so wonderful when you can save these lives and, and these animals are, are, are so healthy and, and, you know, and, and it's all about caring for them and doing what's best for them. You, you see what I'm saying? It's what, yeah. what is best for the animal. And, uh, and, and it gives us great joy that, uh, that we are able to, and, and we're everywhere. I mean, we're in Walmarts, uh, we're in Targets, online, everybody, Petco.com, PetSmart.com, TractorSupply.com. I mean, you know, Walmart, Target.com, all of the places carry our food. But the key thing is that we want people's dogs to, to live longer. And as I started to say, the only complaint I get once in a while, somebody will complain, say, you and your wife are so nuts about animals. Why don't you do something for humans? Okay. And I said, wait a minute. If I help you keep your dog or cat an extra five or 10 years longer and healthier, don't you think I've done something for you? And they go, oh, well, I never thought of it that way. That's true. When you think but about it that way. Our lives when we have our pets longer. And on our bag is a photo of, of my daughter, Melody one of her dogs okay she's had more than 20 years the same dog okay you know the, the, and, and, and it's just absolutely wonderful that she, you know uh, she could grow up with with uh, with her best friend and have that best friend for over 20 years so again and and we help people for free uh, our, our our phone numbers on the back of every bag and on the can we have canned food made with by the way all fresh ingredients who does we had to go to canada to find a company that would make every single thing in that can with fresh ingredients. And in fact, it's right near the, it, 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 the plant is right near the ocean. When the ships come in early in the morning from being out fishing all night long, they get the fresh fish, or we have fresh beef, fresh turkey, fresh chicken. In our, our cat food, we have fresh tuna. I mean, everything is is the best of the best. And, and, and we don't, buy from other sources that aren't really great sources, like in the case of our chicken here in the United States, okay, Tyson is the number one provider of chicken in the United States. We buy our chicken from Tyson, the same people that put chicken in your grocery stores. And, and, and we, our whole concept is everything is the best and the best. And with that, you have the best chance of having your pet with you many years longer. Hmm. And non-GMO, which is very, very important too, all natural, 100% uh, complete balanced nutrition for cats, kittens, dogs, seniors, indoor, outdoor, all of it, right? Everything, everything, you know, and it, and it really works. And we get amazing reasons. We get people that, that, I mean, they're almost unbelievable stories where their dog was going to die, for example, and, and their vet had had him on a prescription food. And finally, the vet was telling this one lady that, you know, I'm sorry, we're, you know, your dog's going to die anyway. She's, well, if my dog is going to die anyway, I'm going to switch from this prescription food that my dog doesn't even want to eat. And I'm going to feed gentle giants. And at least the dog in the last few weeks of its life can, can have, enjoy the food. Turns out that after feeding our food for two weeks, that the that all the negative stuff had stopped. You know, there's and and then after a month, it had receded. And the vet said, "Oh well, this can happen. You know, it's a freak kind of thing where you know uh, it, this can happen." Well, guess what? Without all the grease, okay, mm -hmm. with without the genetically modified organisms, the dog is still alive today, okay. And and the lady wrote this beautiful letter, and then somebody else. We just put it up on our website last August. Uh, I got an email from someone, I, I didn't even know who it was, and they, they said, uh, Mr. Ward, I want you to know that for the last 15 years, we've been feeding General Giants to, to our German Shepherd. He just now died, but he was 23 years old. Mm. 23 years old for it's a German un Shepherd. Unheard of, yeah. It's not just us having these results, other people can have the same results. But we do tell you, it's more than just the food, it's how you care for your dog, how you feed your dog and what you feed your dog. And and our food is the thing that is number three that feeds, but the other is a special feeding care program. It's free information. Go to gentlegiantsdogfood.com. Go to the special feeding and care program. And I tell everybody, 
It's quite a bit of material, but that took my wife and I 25 years of our life to learn what you as a reader can read in less than 25 minutes. Mm. It's incredibly powerful. So you've gone through it all and the research and condensing, and that's really amazing. You know, Refined. bless you. Yeah. That's what Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, you know, when we would spar together, one of the things he would love to talk about, every move that he would make, he would refine. First, it might be a big move, you know what I mean, for a big, you know, roundhouse punch or kick or something, but then he would refine it. And the whole idea was to be as efficient as possible with the least amount of effort. Exactly right. Exactly. And that's the best. I mean, when you achieve that, you know, when you, you've had these different worlds you've been in, you know, incredible fame with television, Batman, other projects that you've been involved in. And now this, and you've been doing this for years, as you've said, um, both equally bringing you complete joy, I would imagine, huh? Just a sense of contentment and peace, knowing that you are, like somebody had posted, you know, he's he's still being a superhero because, <laughs> uh, you know, what, the entertainment and everything that people get out of watching a series like Batman and the good feelings and the good vibes and forgetting about our troubles of the day, like those nostalgic shows have done for so many decades. And now doing this, continuing to pay it for it, continuing to impact lives in a way that uh, goes beyond what most people tend to do. You could have easily just said, you know what? I was on Batman. I'm good. I'm going to go <laughs> into, I'm going to disappear over here. But no, you're, that's not who you are. You really like right. to be active and you like to give back. And that's a really cool thing, Bert. And, and yet at the same time, Jim, you know, we don't really think about it at the time. It's like, hey, I got to take care of this. I mean, this dog, you know, came here injured. I mean, we got to do it. You know, I mean, there, it's not like a second thought, well, do we do this or do we do that or, uh, or this consideration? It is, it has to be done, yeah. period, yeah. you know, yeah. and uh, we really want to have, and we're setting this up that long after we're gone from this planet, that ho hopefully people will be able to get our food and their dogs can live the maximum lifespan. You know, I talk about pure nutrition, none of these other negatives. All of this is so much about money. And, and I, I just, we don't, we never want it to be that way. We just love animals and we want we want everybody to be happy, you know, and, and by the way, we have a special event we put on every year. It's the, and we just did it last year as a first Burt Ward, first annual Batusi for world peace day. Tell us so about we that. Put on this event. And what we did is we had an event, all these people came and this was right at, right after I got the star in Hollywood Boulevard, but we contacted people all over the world. And we have, for example, and all video now, and then we're putting this together. We're editing it together. And we have like Israeli soldiers in front of the Wailing Wall dancing the Batusi and, and Channel 10 in Australia, all the hosts are dancing. <laughs> and the whole idea was that with all the stress and all the negative stuff in the world, let's stop for just a few minutes, have some fun, dance the Batusi, and everybody, the way they do it is their own way. And, and it makes you laugh. And you can't help but laugh. And you have a good fun. <laughs> And maybe you might look upon your neighbor a little kinder. And, and just from the fact that we all are on this planet, Jim, for such a short period of time that we need to make the most of it. Absolutely. That is so beautifully said. Short, precious. And if uh, anything we've learned out of what we've experienced with the pandemic and everything this past year is life is short and life is precious. How have you stayed creative, collaborative and sane and balanced during the year we've all experienced, Bert? Well, I, I wouldn't necessarily add sane to my list. Everybody uh, says no, that. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but I will, no, but, but seriously, you, you know something? Every day, I mean, there, there's a kind of a saying, live each day as though it were your last and someday you'll be right. right? <laughs> you know, don't take life seriously. You don't get out of alive anyhow. And the best things in life are free, so here I am, good for nothing, right? Uh, but um, and uh, I mean, all the and I live by these these sayings, and they're kind of hokey and fun and stuff like that. But but we we have fun. We we make this fun. You know, this is not a chore. This is like 
it's something that we're happy to do. We have fun and, and we love these animals, you know, uh, and, 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 and we love our children and, and we love people. And we try to, every day to try to make things a little bit better than they were the day before. You know, and I tell everybody, you know, look, nothing in life is easy. You know, in fact, I tell everybody the first 100 years are the hardest. After that, it's pretty smooth sailing. Then you just go. <laughs> then you just coast, right? <laughs> yeah, you take it easy after the. And by the way, my own mother uh, two weeks ago turned a hundred. One hundred years. I told her. I went to see her. I said, "Mom, happy birthday to mom on your first one hundred years." She said, what what's, do you mean? what's her I, first name? Uh, her name is Margie. Okay. Margie, happy birthday. Thank you. And and I and, and she said, well, now, why do you say it that way? You know, I said, congratulations on your first hundred years. I said, because I intend to wish you happy birthday on your next hundred years. And I said, yes. by the way, mom, no more somersaults. you got to start taking <laughs> That's so she's still trying to do handstands in the swimming oh, pool. Well, she was a dancer, <laughs> and she, you know, and, but she gets around good and she's just, I mean, she is sharp as a tack. I mean, she's just, you know, right there and, and she just says it like it is, you know. Yeah, yeah. She's from, she was born in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. She became uh, uh, Miss Fort Worth and runner up for Miss Texas. And she was a very talented um uh, uh, dancer, they, they, you know, they had the ballroom dancing and stuff like that at that time. Um, but, um, and then my father was an agent before he got into the, to show business with the Rhapsody on ice, um, uh, ice skating. But, you know, I grew up in a family where there was a lot of love and yet we weren't pressured. They, you know, my parents said to me, Bert, it's your choice. If you don't want to study your choice and, and look at you know, how it can affect your future. And I started thinking about it. I said, well, you know, I've never been pressured to do anything. I don't like I have to go study or have to do that. But, gee, I don't want to have things turn out where, you know, I, I don't have as much opportunity. So I'm going to work hard. And mm -hmm. I've had that kind of a good work ethic my whole life. Yeah. And yeah, Tracy yeah. and I have fun. I will tell you one thing. It's a good thing I'm on your show first. Because if Tracy ever came on the show... You would think, and all your watchers would think, Bert, he must be a mute. He doesn't even have a chance to talk. His <laughs> wife out talks him 10 to 1. Uh -oh. And you see the two of us trying to get the last word in, even the first word in. It. It's, it's like she has more energy than anyone I've ever met in my entire life. That's I incredible. love her to death. Yeah. And she has so many ideas. Yeah. yeah. But I'm worn out. I'm worn out. She is so energetic and so always like, go, go, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do this. I said, oh, honey, honey, come here. let's just take five minutes. Does she have a Batmobile? <laughs> you know, we, we actually were having one made and there was some problem with some parts and stuff. We ended up not getting it. But um, we do have a Surrey with our horse. Uh, his name is Sandman. And the Surrey is one of these, like an old Amish Surrey, you know, with the uh, with, with the fringe on the top and the yeah, front and the yeah. back seat. And it, it's really cool, you know, to have that. Uh, and uh, and our horse, his name is Sandman. And he, he, listen, this horse is he is smartest horse I've ever seen in my life. We, we would have people come over to our house and we'd go for a ride. And so come on, we'll go. We have a kind of a steep driveway. We go up the driveway, go down about three or four blocks, and go around and come back. And uh, the, and he would go up this driveway pulling these people, and they say, "Bert, I don't know. You know, his horse looks like he's having a really tough time." And and I said, "Oh, don't don't you worry about him." And then we're, as we're going farther and farther down the street, he's slowing down, and his eyes are like, and and they said, "Maybe it's too hard on this horse, right?" And I yeah. said, "No, you don't understand." And we would get down three blocks, and we turn around. And with all my strength, I can't hold this horse back. He wanted to run all the way home. I'm pulling like this. And they said, I can't believe it. And he just, you know, that's why you call him Sandman. He lull you to sleep thinking that you're just, a, you know, <laughs> you're, you're making him work too hard. And oh man, did that horse have energy. And he, he's so playful. I love him. You know what I mean? He loves his back scratch. I mean, we love animals, you know, and uh, yeah. and if you love animals, uh, it's a uh, it's it's a wonderful thing, you know, because they're very real. Somebody, uh, one of the viewers, had also asked if a role popped up that you really liked and interested you, would you take it? Would you consider it? Would you go back into uh, 
doing it? Well, absolutely. You know, yeah. it was only, uh, you know, was, the last thing I did, I think, was Supergirl. But yes, I would love to. In fact, Adam and I wanted very much to recreate Batman if, in a movie, in movies mm -hmm. or on television. This is even when the movies were out with all the dark versions of them and stuff. We just thought it would be hilarious of having like, you know, Batman and Robin, they're older now, right? I mean, so, you know, maybe there's a big crime in Gotham City and Batman hasn't been, you know, contacting all this time. And now he realizes he's going to fight crime and he goes to his closet and the dust billows out from his trying to get his, you know, his cape cleaned off and Robin can't get his tights up. I mean, it could be hilarious. And if you think about it, look what happened with Star Trek. Yeah. William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, they did like seven, eight Star Trek movies after the series ended. People didn't care that they were older. They loved them. They, they loved, loved them. They, they were so endeared to them that their foibles of not being able to move as fast and that that just human and people loved it. And I yeah, really yeah. think the studio missed out by not pursuing Adam and I to have give us an opportunity to do another series or or a series of movies. It, it would have been great fun. It was kind of like when they paired up Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon in the Grumpy Old Men series uh -huh. of movies, that type of thing. They knew that uh, you know they were older at that time and seasoned veterans, but just the camaraderie of the two from the original Odd Couple days. Uh, exactly. People loved it, and yes, yes. that. Uh, what uh, somebody else had asked earlier. What did you think of the movies that followed later? Obviously, quite different than the TV series. Right, right. Well, they they were made for a theater audience, which at the time they were made, the majority of people that go into the theaters, the majority are the teenagers and the college kids, the date nights, and the and so they're they they the, the studio felt a need for a grittier, you know, a little harder version. Uh, I love this. I loved our series because ours was for yeah. everybody, you know, yeah. Other, yeah. For, yeah. all ages could enjoy it. Um, but, and, and I think that the various actors that have played Batman, uh, they're all great actors, but in my mind, there really is only one Batman. And that was Adam West. All the yeah, others yeah. were great actors and they did a great job, but they really weren't Batman. Adam yeah. West. Was. Yeah. Yeah. You really look back at these years fondly, don't you, Bert? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, and, uh, you know, we, we, we we like very much to do and live every day, you know, and make the most of it. And um, you know, I have a piece of advice uh, for your your viewers, if you like, because uh, yeah. everybody wants to be happy, right? Yeah. I mean, isn't that really what it's all about? We all want to be happy. I mean, we'd like to be creative. We'd like to do great things, but I think we all really want to be happy. You know. That's right. And so um, there are three essentials to happiness. Okay, here's where they are. Someone to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. Those are the three essentials to happiness. You are right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes in our busy, crazy lives, we forget that, don't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, uh, life can be difficult, you know. That's, uh, they definitely can. What have you learned maybe, you know, during this past year, Bert, we've all been sort of looking at our own lives and things we want to do going forward in our next chapters in our lives and everything. What were some of those teachable moments and things that maybe you learned even about Bert during what we've experienced in the last year? Because we certainly have had time to reflect and uh, grow as a result of everything we've experienced. Well, let me tell you what I have learned over the years. Being young and being enthusiastic and being the character portraying Robin and, and just in my own life, you know, which is very much the character, um, you know, you think of the future as unending, you know, in other words, it's just going to go on forever. But as you get older, you realize that there is a time and there's a clock. OK, and you only have so much time on this planet. And as I get older, I want to do more and more and more. Yeah. Because I want every second to count. Each day, every single second can be valuable and 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 you can have a great time, you know? And 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 I think that all of us need to look forward to the future and say, "Okay, I'm here for a while. Don't know how long I'm going to be here, but I want to try to do everything I can to be happy." And very often, 
and especially in our case, we end up being happiest when we're doing something for someone else and not for ourselves. You know, so mm-hmm. caring for the animals or or people call and ask, what, what do I do about this or my dog or this problem and that? I mean, whatever it might be, we we find that it's very satisfying knowing that you made things just a little bit better each day. Each day you do something that makes things one step further in the best direction. And if all of us did that, we could have an amazing, wonderful life for everybody and, and a wonderful, happy planet. I agree 100%. Beautiful words, my friend. Beautiful words. I just want to show you some of the viewers, the international viewers watching around the world, the loveities. Thank you for your your truthful positivity from Amy. Kathleen in New York City says, this is an amazing show. Thank you both, Bert. You are the perfect lovity. Uh, <laughs> Sherry Larson says, amen. And uh, Amy says, superhero college instructors, LOL, pass down the knowledge. And that's what you do. Renee in Iowa says, animals love us unconditionally and we should them. She also, uh, there was a bevy of happy birthdays for your mom from Renee in Iowa and Chris in Northern Ireland and Jen in Pennsylvania and uh, Jane and Kathleen and Crystal in Connecticut, all wishing your mom well and happy birthday. Uh, Jane also says, uh, wonderful guest you have tonight, Jim. Austin Fields says, another wonderful show. And uh, Christine in North Carolina says, what you have done for all these animals for 20 plus years in the creation of your dog food, pet food is just remarkable. Thanks for caring, being so kind and sharing your love with animals. And uh, that's really beautiful as well, coming in from Christine. And uh, Jane also says, you have a real warm heart for your animals and that is great. Uh, Hooray for you. And uh, Gary Troya in Iowa says, Lovity Bert, thank you for spending your evening with us. This has been fantastic. Um, this is really nice. Kathleen Walker in New York City says, bless you for doing such wonderful work with rescues. I have three cats, all rescues. Wish I could rescue them all. Uh, uh, Kim great. says, you've never stopped being a superhero. That's beautiful too. You've never stopped being a superhero. Well, that's very nice. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring on one of my uh, one of our babies here. I oh, thought great! Maybe, you know, yeah. we, we've been talking about it, and and what what better than to uh, I just sent Tracy uh, out to get uh, Tinkerbell. And, Tinkerbell. Uh, yeah, Tinkerbell, uh, and you know, she's not a big dog. We have tons of big ones here too. Yeah. But uh, Tinkerbell is uh, right now just turning twenty five. And uh, I thought that your viewers would like to actually see a dog that was almost 25 within a <laughs> few months of turning 25. And, yeah. and here she comes here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, hold on here. <laughs> there she comes. Okay, there's Tinkerbell. Ah, there's Tinkerbell. Hello, Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell. Look, there is, she is. Oh, cutie. 25, almost 25 years old, 24 and three quarters. Or 20, Hard, yeah. And, um, and what kind of a dog is she, Tracy? She's, she's a, a Portuguese Pedango Pequeno. Portuguese wow. Pedango Pequeno. It's a miniature I can't, Ibiza. <laughs> I can't even pronounce it. We've got dogs from all over the world. God yeah. bless Tracy for, for being able to say that even once. <laughs> okay. I, even I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Tinkerbell is just the happiest little thing. And you can see her, her eye, like one of her eyes is kind of glazed over. Oh, this is. Oh, well, we've got more. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is a giant Irish wolfhound. Wow, yeah, wolf. this is oh, fantastic. Look, yeah. here. You know, look, at, look at that. Oh, and she is bending down to reach me. I mean, she's and she's sitting <laughs> and standing up. If she's standing up, she'd be above my head. Irish wolfhound, you know, very hairy and stuff like that. But look how affectionate. Look at her. She's flipping my hand up here. I mean, look at this. This dog is you, this dog is going crazy. You know, I, I guess she wants to be on television. I guess she wants to be on but television. You yes. Know, just you in his she, she, I, I, I guess she had heard that they were talking about a revival of Lassie and she wanted to audition maybe for that role. <laughs> no, yeah, I think she's more like uh, Shaggy or something. Like Shaggy. That, you know? <laughs> but uh, but, but you know, they, they are amazing. Irish wolfhounds, they're very rare in the United States. In today's world, they're so rare that if you really want one, you almost have to go to Ireland yeah. to get them. To really. get them. 
Yeah, <laughs> this is funny. Beautiful dog from Sherry Larson and Tinkerbell, cute dog as well. Oh, sweet dog. Jane, who's watching us live in Sweden right now, where it's <laughs> late at night in Sweden. She's watching it and saying, so cute. Renee says, hi, Tinkerbell. Amy says, what a cutie, beautiful dogs. Uh, all these great comments coming in. Oh, I, I can have 50 here, but uh, I'm not that, sure I'd be able but, to. <laughs> just this one. You, you, have to you are. You this is are, 160 pounds of, of driving their head in. These dogs, they love to dock like a ship docking at port. And they put their head into you like, and they force you to pet them. Look at her. She's flipping my hands up here. Okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. But, but you know what I think is also amazing? Not only do you have the one dog there and then the one dog in your arm, the fact that you're even able to keep that green screen up behind you. Yeah, right. <laughs> that That is the test of a Well, tool. if you saw the dogs behind me, nobody would pay any attention to our interview. You know, <laughs> I've got 50 dogs, more than 50 in my house here. Oh, they love you know? pets on this and, show. And pets, food, loving, and children. They they really want their attention, you know. But to do that and hold up that green screen, you are a true television professional. All right, well, hold on here. <laughs> Here we go, Tinkerbell. Here we go. Oh boy! <laughs> oh my lord! That was Whoa. fantastic. I've definitely gone to the dogs. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say uh, the fact that you were able to handle all that. See, that's that's once you go down the bat pole and you're in the bat mobile <laughs> and you're hanging exactly. out. Exactly. You're hanging out to plexiglass at 55 miles an hour and everything. <laughs> that that was nothing, right? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, Carla. Uh, Christina Contreras says, hello, Bert. I'm so excited to see you here. A blast from my personal past. My pops, Armando Contreras, was one of the grips on Batman. I used to come in to the set and watch you when I was six years old. You oh. are cute. Oh, so I thought it was a, a grip on uh, Armando Contreras. Right. was a grip on Batman, huh? Well, Carla, you have excellent taste. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a village. I tell you, it takes a village. Uh, this is really fantastic. Dwight uh, says hello as well. And uh, he goes, I did living single. Yeah, that, that, that was really a funny. Now, that was done in front of a live audience. You know what I mean? Yes. And, uh, that was a very funny episode. Um, and uh, it, it uh, I, you can watch it on the Internet. It's, it's funny. There's so many of these things where they get clips and then you can watch, you know, the, the stuff that I've done on the Internet. And, and it's kind of funny. Uh, a number of people already saying I plan to order the dog food. They're no, uh, ordering. Right. Yeah. yeah, they're already ordering, and uh, yeah, <laughs> the dogs want to be lovities. That's why these dogs <laughs> are cute. Uh, <laughs> I love these comments. So yeah, they've already gone to uh, the websites. Carla has uh, just ordered some of oh, the wow. for her babies as well. Um, that is cool. So really beautiful dogs. Um, what can't superhero Bert do? <laughs> well, I'm sure there's a lot I can't do, but, but you know, you know, the thing is what's, what really makes Tracy and I happy is that most people tell us after they've transitioned their dog to our food. And I must tell you, I really would like to mention one thing for those of you that get, whether it's our cat food or our dog food, our food is dramatically different than these other foods that doesn't have all the fat or the grease. And therefore you have to slowly transition your dog to our food. We tell people, whatever you were feeding, you mix that with Gentle Giants over a one week period. Day one, 80% of the old food, 20% Gentle Giants. Day two, 70, 30, 60, 40, you know, that kind of thing. Because it is so dramatically different and so helpful. But what I want to say is that most people call us, if they call us, they'll call us like a month later after they've transitioned their dog. And they'll say something like, I can't believe I have the same dog. I mean, <laughs> or, or things like my, oh, my dog used to jump up my bed. And for the last three years, he hasn't been able to jump on the bed. I fed him now your food for five weeks. He's jumping on the bed again. Thank you for giving me my puppy back. That's is that not amazing? We get. Isn't that, I mean, and that is the satisfaction that, that we get because it works. And, you know, it, it's just these lives are so precious. Really, we, 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 and, and it's such a gift that when you still have your pet with you, because so many people have written to me and they, they say, Bert, I, if I'd only known, if I'd only known, you know, but I don't have my dog or my cat anymore, but a lot of people that have them, there's still time and change it all around. It doesn't have to go downhill. It can come right back up and be where it was. 
if you give yeah. them the yeah. best food and the best attention and lots of love. That's the key. Lots of love. Lots of love. Uh, Renee says she sent the link about the food to her daughter so she can check it out. She works at a veterinary clinic and she wants to get some of their uh, grand dog, Zach, some of the food as well. And uh, uh, let's see. Robbie says, talk about the kitties, too, and maybe the food that you have for the kittens and the, the cats as well. Yes. Well, cats need slightly different protein, a few other things that are different. And, and we have the best of the best people making that. But now we haven't had as many cats. I mean, we had 15,500 dogs and we stopped counting about three years ago, but we probably had somewhere about 350 cats, which I mean, you know, that's still a lot of cats, right? <laughs> and, yeah. and, and they're very loving. Um, and uh, we teach all of our animals to get along with every other animal. So when people would come to adopt a dog, we that we've already trained the dog and then we train the people how to handle the dog so you know it's it's kind of all works all together and they the the cats they're 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 very loving they're very affectionate they uh they you know all of my cats i mean they nuzzle and nuzzle and you know we they let me you know pet them and everything scratch their bellies and stuff like that some people's cats are friendly but you know you have to go slow that's one thing yeah, with animals yeah. You can't go at your pace. You have to go at their pace. And there are some dogs that were, you know, who knows what happened in their past or, or, or even cats. I mean, yeah. we've had, for example, feral cats, which are like, you know, they haven't been around humans. They're afraid of humans. And it takes a while. And sometimes you have to do just little baby steps, you know, just a little bit here. And that's good enough for today. And then maybe the next day and this and that. And over time, they all come around because they really all want love. They're just afraid. You see, we as humans see things in shades. In other yeah, words, like yeah. something not that bad, not that good. Animals don't see that. Everything is good or bad, life or death. And, and so an animal that's cautious with you is because they don't know if you're going to kill them. I mean, they, they, they think in extremes. We don't think in extremes like they do. So understanding that you have to take baby steps, you know, and, and, and when you build trust, okay. And, and there's, it's an investment in your time and in your love. But when you, when you reap the results, it's very satisfying. It is very, very satisfying. And so the, 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 the cats that we got that were so feral, you couldn't even, we didn't even see them for like three months. You know, I mean, they're just like, in our, in, I mean, they're, you can't even find them. Right. But finally they come around and then they're just like, you know, the most loving cat in the world. And you say, wow, look, look at, look, look at the difference from where we came, but it didn't happen overnight. And that's what I got. You got to tell people. And the other thing is pay attention. So many people say, oh, well, this or that, and I'm busy. And, and they, they don't pay attention. Having an animal is a real responsibility. It's not for everybody, Jim. I mean, there's right. some people that their schedules, their temperament, they're really not suited to have a pet, but you, cause you got to take care of them and you know, they're a living creature. You've got to be careful. You know, you can't put them at risk. You got to make sure they're healthy. I mean, it's a big responsibility. So if you're willing to undertake that responsibility and you got to make sure that you have the time, you know, and, and the willpower to make some sacrifices, you can get great results because every creature loves affection. They, they, I mean, and they're, they're even better at, at, at accepting affection than some humans, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's Very like true. Uh, some of us grow up in tough times and it kind of stays with you the rest of the life. And whereas animals, they're pretty flexible. If you just let them know that you're not trying to hurt them, that you yeah, only, yeah want to help them and and it just works and and we've never had an animal i mean i used to take um years ago i would retrain dangerous dogs i mean dogs that were really dangerous that we could never even adopt because they were so dangerous but i would make friends with them and they would turn out to be incredibly loving and um it it, it, it i just can't we i had this one dog <laughs> this one dog he was um 
he he uh, he 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 would just growl the most ferocious growl. I mean, when he first growled at me like this. I said, "Oh my gosh, I can't get near this dog." Right? You know what I mean? And yet, he over time, that was his way of talking. And we we play together, and he became so loving and so affectionate. And yet, he had the he looked the scariest thing I ever saw. He, <laughs> You know what I mean? And and yet he was playing with me. But for anybody else, I think, oh, my gosh, oh, my goodness. But, you know, you, you just take baby steps and uh, you can't do it all in one day. And you, you do whatever you can today. Tomorrow's a different day. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, when you look at all of this, this extraordinary life lived and continuing to be lived and obviously with a solid understanding of what life is all about from from day one, from the uh, wonderful sort of support system that your family, your parents gave you, which is paramount. I received my you know, we receive the same thing from our parents and that's what really sets the groundwork. When you look at all of this, all these incredible things, the company that you have now, but the series Batman, everything else that you've had an opportunity to be a part of, what are some of those blessings and joys in your life that continue to inspire you uh, along the way, Bert? I'll tell you what inspires me is to reach people that you might not think are reachable mm. to reach to and even with people that are reachable to help them see a little more happiness in their life people are so thankful when 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 they see you that you you don't mean them harm or you're not trying to get something from them or get them to do something you just wish them well you know and uh and 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 it's uh it's funny because i've always been able to take the time to talk to anybody i've been my whole life very friendly so you know there there are a lot of actors that you know they sort of play the part or they live the part that they think that they are for me it doesn't matter what you do i can easily talk with one person who's you know has a has a job that might not be the greatest job in the world i have the best conversation with them because everybody has a story and everybody craves to be understood and if you think about it it's, 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 it, it, believe it or not, to be understood, to find somebody that, that you can talk to that understands you, it's, it's very satisfying for people. So many people are frustrated. It's like, oh, they don't understand me. They don't understand what I, you know, what I'm going through and, and, and this and that. And, uh, and it's so funny because, believe it or not, these same people, through their animals, have similar experiences so when we help them with their animals it's kind of like helping them as well you know and it's not i mean i don't play psychologist i don't try to be that but good common sense works and with the right attitude when you really just want to do well okay even imperfections people overlook because they say you know it's really trying to help you know <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. And again, this is something that's so near and dear to you and Tracy's hearts. Uh, it's really beautiful work and uh, congratulations on everything. The, uh, the, the star on the walk of fame, but also all the years of enjoyment and entertainment that you have provided with, with Adam and all of the folks that were part of Batman and, and the subsequent productions thereafter. And now of course, with, uh, the, the Gentle Giant Company, that's just really absolutely beautiful, Bert. Um, well, this... we have one more thing I want to share. Yes, please We've do. We've got another new uh, venture called Superheroes to the Rescue. Oh, wow. And Superheroes to the Rescue is a combination of rewarding and thanking people for their efforts who, who do things that go out of their way to do kindness. At the same time, we're also going to do programming of television and make movies and things like that and TV shows. So we're going to do all kinds of things, but it's the superheroes to the rescue. As an example, last year when I got my award, we had that same event, the same time we were doing the Batusi thing. We, we gave a, an award to a number of people who do outstanding things. As an example, there was a young guy that he doesn't make a lot of money. He's, he's a, he's a pilot, not, you know, kind of like a, I mean, he has a regular job, but he learned how to fly a plane and he, he rents a single engine plane 
and he's a big Batman fan, and he dresses up as Batman. He dresses up his dog as Robin. He contacts animal shelters in different states where they have a list of dogs that they haven't been able to find a home for, and now they're going to be put to death if they are, somebody doesn't save them. And he networks with other animal shelters in other parts of the state or in other states, and he flies his... His uh, the plane he rents in his Batman costume and he gets in his dog dressed as Robin. They land at the airport. The animal shelters bring those pets there. Could be cats, could be dogs, and load them onto the plane. And he flies them at his own expense. Doesn't have much money to another city, another state, and he saves lives. And life is the most precious commodity in the world. And we wanted to honor him for that incredible thing that he does. And he doesn't have a lot of money. He's just an average person, but he spends his time doing charity. Mm -hmm. And, and he, and he brings so much happiness and he saves every week, every weekend he's, he's saving a dog or a cat's life. And so we have to honor him. And then in our own case, we're going to do our programming. We're actually uh, putting together uh, our own little like, studio on our property and recording and filming and computer animation and stuff, which I, all of this I love. I find very creative. And we're going to make programs to try to make a better world for all of us and reach people with loving, fun, excitement that that is such a positive thing that it makes you feel good afterwards, yeah. you know? Yeah. Let's stay in touch because I'm all about that and inspiration, empowering and uplifting other people. And I'd love to learn more about some of those projects and some of those cool things. And I'd love to continue to spread the word and and just learn more about some of those upcoming projects and productions. That's very exciting. I would love to, if I'm on a TV shoot out, you know, uh, in LA or if you're ever on the East Coast here. Yeah, yeah, break break bread and chat with you about some of this because you're you're just amazing, Bert. And I think that people tonight on this episode of our show, uh, they know Bert as Robin, they know him as the talent, they know him as this brilliant artist, but now they know the man behind all of that. They know the guy with the big heart, they know the guy with the big smile, the guy that's passionate, enthusiastic, you know, loving family, wonderful wife, all of the animals, just you've got a blessed situation here and you are uh, very aware of that and you uh, pay heed to it, which I think is extraordinary. Some of the comments coming in, like Kathleen says, I'm so happy I was here for this. Thank you, Jim and Bert. I'll always be a fan of Bert. Continue blessings to you. Um, Dwight actually wants to know if you still have the uh, Robin costume with the tights. I donated that and it raised $500,000 for charity. And, oh, and also oh, something oh. else that we do, I also have another company called Boy Wonder Visual Effects. And I've done the graphics for 35 feature films with a whole crew of people where we did 3D animation. And, and Tracy and I are very into technology and we have a lot of fun. We have a whole bunch of computers and, and we, we up to date on the latest and greatest stuff. And, and it's, it's fun for us. So it's, and it's something that we can be creative with you know, and uh, and so we, we do a little of everything. That is amazing. Renee in Iowa says, hope you come back on the show again, Bert, and talk more about your animals and what you do for them. Christine, North Carolina says, tonight's show has been phenomenal. Bert, extraordinary human being. I'm happy for his successful career, respect, his love for animals. Lovely hugs to Bert and all the animals as well. Merlin in Canada, she wanted to know also, she asked the question earlier, if they can order the pet food. She's in Canada and Ontario. Yes, Walmart carries our, our food. So and, we and we're going to open up a an online presence there. Well, Walmart uh, and Walmart also Walmart.ca. Now uh, here in the US work.com, Walmart CA, they have our uh, our dog food and hopefully they'll have our cat food soon. But we're going to open up our, our website called uh, Gentle Giants Pet Products Canada and where will people be able to get the food for the cats and it's not just the 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 dry food it's also the what they call wet food or canned food and again everybody gets free help i get calls from canada all the time about feeding and care and what do i do about this and when's a good time to go to a vet and when's not a good time to go to a vet and 
and you know how do you keep the cost down and and you know how do you how do you make the best of your time with your pet and that's very important because time is the most precious commodity life is the most precious commodity but time and life are the most precious commodities in the world absolutely and merlin says it's been an honor to have met you keep up the good work and amy says Bert is our lovely superhero, and uh, Renee says, it was great to see you, Bert. I was around 11 when I first met you, so it's been a few years, LOL. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm and, sure of that, right? <laughs> <laughs> this was amazing, my friend, and truly, I hope we can stay in touch. I would love to know more about some of the wonderful things you're doing to continue to give back. I'm so big, we try to do that. You know, we have the, uh, that element underneath all this entertainment and everything that we do on the Gym Master Show right. Live. We have that sort of vibe, and I've always been like that. And I love projects that inspire and uplift and, and really care for others. And you're doing that, Bert. So, uh, well, the next time maybe we can have the other half of my dynamic duo, Tracy, because when you see her energy, I mean, she is like, oh, my Lord. I've never seen anybody so energetic and well, I must tell you, she has her own uh, Robin outfit. You know what I mean? She calls it, she's Robin's girl. She has a Robin outfit and I'm telling you, she looks better in that costume than I do. She is really, uh, and but it's so fun and she's into everything that we've talked about and everything we do is all with a positive, what can we do better and make this a better world for everybody? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and if she's been standing behind that green screen, holding it up all this time, she <laughs> is the real, she's the real yeah, superhero. Yeah, that, that would be truly a support <laughs> person, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, somebody did ask, do you miss, do you miss acting? Uh, you know, I, I, to me, all it's all fun. Right. It, it, I don't think of it like work. I think of it like fun. And you know, yeah, anything yeah. you do that you have a good time with, it is fun, and and you don't think of it as as work. Right, um, right. And I like to be very creative. And you know, there's all kinds of things, and I've got all kinds of opportunities. You know, if I want to do that, and it's like you know, there's only so much that you. Know, I, I mean, I'd like to figure how I can get thirty hours in every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and I'll tell you something. talk about work. My wife Tracy, she works more than I work. Does you know? she? I mean, I like to kiddingly say that, you know, I said last year, I said, now, you know, Tracy, uh, you promised me I'd get a half day off at Christmas. And she, <laughs> I never said that. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> I never said that. You don't get that half day off at Christmas. It, but, that voice know, came from just out of some oh, yeah. thin oh, air. You may not hear me and you may not see me, but I'm always by But myself. I am always by myself. <laughs> <laughs> sidekick. <laughs> yeah, no, she is like unbelievable, you know, and, 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 but you know, something we really do have a great time and I wish every one of your viewers out there happiness and love and uh, success and, you know, but, and don't be so hard on yourselves. Everybody likes, you know, we all get to be too hard on ourselves. Just, you know, uh, just do the best you can every day. And that's all any of us can do, you know, and if you make a little bit of progress, if today you did a little bit more than yesterday, you're still ahead of the game. Absolutely. Soraya says, Burt Ward rocks. I fell in love with Robin when I was a little girl. Robin rocks. <laughs> Rock and Robin. There you uh, go. <laughs> uh, Amy goes, show yourself, Tracy. LOL. Much Come love. Oh, you know, she's like, you know, it, yeah. it's funny. She's a very, very beautiful lady. Very beautiful oh, lady. Absolutely. And she's a, Beautiful enough. We're all beautiful enough. Yeah, I, I, I saw Very. her behind the scenes. I saw her, folks, when oh, we were yeah. preparing, and she absolutely is with a good yeah. heart, too. Good heart. Oh, I'll tell you That's something. That's what's the most important. She, you know, can I yes. tell you, in, yes. in all the years of caring for these animals, she spends as much as 20 hours a day, mm. seven days a week yeah. for 26 years yeah. saving yeah. lives. I mean, yeah. it's just. You yeah. know, and and she and it's so funny because she's very productive. I mean, she can do more, you know, th than five people. I'm telling you, this and that, yeah. and this yeah. and that. We got to do this. We got to do that. That that's you know what I mean. 
And I thought I was energetic, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the turtle and she's the hare. I mean, just. Shoo, 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 she's shoo, the, uh, you know? the right energizer bunny, right? But she's, you guys are doing it all out of love. And that's the key. Absolutely. You're doing absolutely. it out of love, love and care and respect. And it's, it's absolutely beautiful. You guys are the best, really, truly. I hope we get a chance to uh, break bread. I would really love that, Bert and Tracy. And uh, we'll keep the porch light on for you. You're welcome back on. Oh the show anytime you want. And I hope the show met whatever expectations you had and you met. Oh, I had a great time. You, you know, I, I, can I tell you everything we try to do, we try to have fun with, and you know, believe it or not, if you, if you have fun with it, if things work out great, we had fun on Batman, Adam and I, we used to say that we put on our tights to put on the world. In fact, we, we were the only superheroes that wore our underwear on the outside of our clothes. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. I, I'm sure you miss him too, huh? Oh, I loved Adam. I, there's no question about it. He and I, we could sit there and even if we had nothing to say, I could look at him, he could look at me and we start laughing. And we yeah. just laugh and laugh and laugh. And it just, just such a great, fun human being, you know, and, uh, and so creative and just so, and he could just say the most unexpected things, you know, <laughs> and that's, which was, you know, having to deal with somebody who was unpredictable, that was a challenge as well as fun, at, you know, yeah. uh, at the same time. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And enjoying every second of it too, along the way. Thanks so much for all this time. A toast to you, to Tracy, to your family, to your mom on her 100th, and uh, all the very best, Bert. Again, I hope you'll stop by the show again, and I hope we'll have an opportunity to uh, to meet up. That would be a real pleasure and a lot of fun. Well, I, I, I'd like to conclude with a line from Batman. To the Batmobile, citizens! <laughs> <laughs> Off to Gotham City! <laughs> Bert, thank you very much. You were really a, a pleasure. And I hope you enjoyed the time with me on the show as much as I have with you. Oh, that's great. We, I had a lot of fun. I think Crazy had a lot of fun, even though she's in the background. <laughs> she is that associate producer doing a there bang up job. You, <laughs> you guys have a great night. Appreciate thank all you. of the time. And uh, again, the years of entertainment and the beautiful work you're continuing to do uh, now, I think is just glorious stuff, gang. So you have a wonderful rest of your evening, and uh, let's stay in touch. I would love that. All right. Well, thank you, Jim. You take care. and Goodbye, everybody. Have a good evening. Take care. All right. There he goes. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bert Ward, the one and only Bert Ward here on the Jim Masters Show Live. He has zipped into his Batmobile, and psh, he's going back into the Batcave with uh, Tracy, his lovely wife, Tracy, and all of those dogs and kittens and wow did you see those pictures we showed really amazing too and again you might not have known that they do that kind of work yes they've been doing that not just in the last few years they've been doing that for a couple of decades now and again i think it's just absolutely spectacular the rescues and now the pet food company as well and a number of you have said this evening while we were doing the show here with bert uh, as our guest live from LA, uh, that you were ordering the products already. That's cool. There is a website right there, gentlegiantspetproducts.com. And uh, keep watch for the websites uh, and all the other incredible things that uh, Bert and Tracy are doing. Here are some of the packages we were showing these earlier along the way. Some of the packaging is really, really cool too. And uh, Really, really a lot of fun. And this was great. And you loved some of the stories he was talking about here with this shot. And how about the story about the bat pole and what it was like coming down the bat pole? That was amazing. And of course, working with some of the legends over the years, like <laughs> the Joker, Cesar Romero, and, and so many of the others, the wonderful Burgess Meredith, of course. <laughs> And uh, just everybody, it was just one of those shows that, uh, you know, you have a good time with it. You have a good time with it. And uh, he was talking about how they would climb up and then there'd be a different uh, sort of guest star, the story about the pinball machine. And that was really cool that he shared with us his voice coming out of that machine as well, specifically for Tracy. 
his uh, admiration and the wonderful working relationship and friendship he had with Adam West, who of course played Batman all those years and the love of family and uh, their pets and so much more. And so cool about the Batcave too. I mean, $800,000 set back in the 60s. Unbelievably spared no expense. And how about some of the stories about the risk involved too? You know, to do a high action series like that, even with its dry wit, you would imagine there'd be a lot of risk. And, uh, but he met it and he met it well. Congratulations to him as well. Getting his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Is that not amazing? Absolutely. He is uh, television royalty as well. And you know, we've had other guests on the show too. I know you guys, I, I work in television and radio, so I really do love the, the TV guests we have come on. Uh, Stanley Livingston was on from My Three Sons. You may remember Cammie Cutler from The Waltons was on. And um, let's see, Kathy Garver, who played Sissy on Family Affair was on not that long ago as well. You can see all those past episodes too on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Kathleen says, fantastic. And uh, she's in New York City. Thank you very much, Kathleen. Love it. By Bert and Tracy from Brene in Iowa. And uh, she also says, thanks so much uh, to you, Bert, and your wife, Tracy, behind the scenes for being on the show tonight. Thank you for your years of entertaining us on Batman and the work you're now doing for the animals. That's really wonderful. And uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And uh, Jim, I wanted to say happy early anniversary on my birthday. Your birthday is May 19th. The show is awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, I work in TV and radio as a you know television radio host, actor, writer, producer, journalist, voiceover artists, uh, personality, presenter all these years. And we started this show a year ago, 400 episodes later. Unbelievable. And thanks for all the kind words. We love it. We're having a good time here on the Jim Master Show Live entertainment lifestyle talk show series where we truly are bringing back the lost art of conversation. We want to thank our, again, our very, very special guest, Bert Ward for joining us here on the show. Uh, again, I really think that if you already appreciated him and who he was, uh, I think that went a lot deeper, even tonight, just getting a chance to see and hear uh, who the man behind Robin and all the other things and, wonderful opportunities he's had really is. And uh, it's Burt Ward and really, really fantastic. So we thank him. We thank Tracy for also working behind the scenes uh, to help get this together as well. <laughs> we also talked about all the, the fantastic characters and all the different things that have come out of Batman uh, over the years. Just really some amazing stuff. The animated series, the movies subsequently as well. You guys are the best. Uh, thank you very much. I want to let you know that tomorrow night, for those of you that follow us live, John McDaniel is with us, the composer and lyricist and pianist. He was the music director on the Rosie O'Donnell show, and he is going to be with us tomorrow night live. And then the brilliant actress and singer Megan McDonough is going to be here on Tuesday uh, Ruta Lee is going to be joining us on June 8th, another Hollywood legendary actress, and so many more guests coming up. John Davidson, remember the singer? John Davidson, an actor, and he had his own talk show, the John Davidson Show as well. Uh, he was uh, amazing and still is. He has a fantastic, he lives up in New Hampshire now, and uh, he's got a new sort of um, sort of like a music venue he's going to talk about that is a really cool name. We're going to welcome him coming up in just about, I think, two weeks. A uh, terrific show tonight, Jim. Thanks for a wonderful evening. My pleasure, Kathy in Cleveland, Ohio. And Kathleen Walker in New York City says, so much fun. Thank you, Jim. Smiling. Have a great night. Good night, all. I know you are excited to be off from the New York Mets tonight. <laughs> and you got a chance to uh, chime in. And my pleasure. Thanks, everyone, to you as well, Soraya. Gang, we thank you for being with us. Don't forget the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series is here at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, live on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. If you missed an episode and you'd like to see this again, feel free. 24-7, 365 at our YouTube channel. Everything is there for you. Over 400 episodes with guests from all walks of life. Lots of levity, lots of levity. Um, host segments on location segments. You know, holiday segments, we've, we've pretty much run the gamut here. What's great about this show 
It's not the same old, same old. We had a show earlier today with the Strings and Things Contemporary Irish Folk Band. That was a lot of fun. And then uh, yesterday we had Debbie Gravitt. She was with us, the Tony winning actress. And then we also had before that the UK pop stars and pop group Madison Skies. We had four shows this weekend. That is a unbelievable. I'm going to sleep well tonight. We also invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of the amazing content uh, on our channel, Gym Masters TV. Also, uh, we do pop-up shows sometimes that are unannounced, so you'll keep abreast of that as well. Mary Bishop, good night, everyone. Take care. You as well, Mary. want to let you guys know, too, that on Wednesday, it is our one-year anniversary celebration. That's right. One year celebration of the Jib Master Show Live as of actually the anniversary hit last week. Early May of 2020 is when we launched this series. So it's mid-May now, but we wanted to put together uh, a really nice anniversary special. It's going to be live Wednesday night if you want to be with us, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. One of the great ones to be a part of. I know sometimes you guys, uh, you know, you have busy lives too, like we all do, and you can't see everything live. That's perfectly fine. Uh, those of you who are watching this in the replay in the archives, we thank you for watching as well. And, uh, but uh, when we do live like celebrations, that's a cool night to be around. Thanks for the uplifting conversation with Bert. I could not love it more. See you tomorrow for the John McDaniel Show. It's going to be great. Good night, Jim, and all lovely hugs. Now, gang, tomorrow, just so you know, tomorrow night's show is at 8 p.m., 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, okay? We usually do our shows 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, but tomorrow it's going to be 8 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific. So, Again, wonderful musical director. You remember seeing him all the time on the Rosie, Rosie O'Donnell show, and he's a brilliant composer and lyricist and great musician, all around great guy. We're so excited to welcome him to the show tomorrow on the Gym Master Show Live. That is 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. That's for those of you who watch us live. If you're watching this in the archives, then none of that matters. <laughs> you can binge watch any of these episodes whenever you like for your convenience. That's what we tried to do when we established this show for all of you and for all of us, um, you know, a year ago already, a year ago already. So since we've been talking about a lot of uh, positivity tonight, we always say, don't forget to share uh, the smile, really important, right? And Bert talked a lot about that. Life is short, life is precious. Don't forget to share the levity. Don't forget to find your Zen place. Mine is with loving family and friends. Of course, uh, cycling and tennis and music and nostalgia, all kinds of cool stuff. And the ocean, swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, floating, sailing in it. Love the ocean, living here along the Northeast coast in the United States. We love the ocean. And my work in television and radio and stage, on air, on camera, and uh, behind the scenes as well. Love, love it all. And uh, gardening is another area too we enjoy. Uh, get out there and get the hands dirty and start planting and work that work that soil. Thanks for joining us on the Gym Master Show Live, gang. You are the best. Thanks for uh, sharing, tagging. Just want to let you know, we do have a Facebook group for our show. It's called JMS Live Lovety Hall. You're all welcome to pop in. I try to pop in as often as I can as well to say hi to everybody. Everybody posts away photos and recipes and pictures. And again, that is available on Facebook at J JMS Live Lovety Hall which is really cool. We started that Facebook group for all of you to mingle and have a good time together. You can find me on social media at Jim Masters TV on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to like and follow. I'll do the same. And of course, our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. And uh, we thank everybody who has been sending in uh, the videos for our anniversary show coming up this Wednesday. We got a lot of videos that were made by guests. We received a ton of them this weekend and we thank everybody. And those uh, who wanna send some in, uh, the deadline is Tuesday. This Tuesday to get them in, you can send them to gymmasterstv at gmail.com, gymmasterstv at gmail.com. Uh, deadline is Tuesday, so that way there we can ingest them into our system and we'll have them available for viewing on our anniversary show. One year. Absolutely amazing. All right, gang, we're going to wrap up. 
two shows today, two yesterday. Whew, we've been working really hard uh, this weekend for all of you. Good night, Jim and everyone. Thank you for a phenomenal show. My pleasure, Crystal Nolan in Connecticut. Right back at you, Kathleen. Love it. And um, this is going to be fantastic. It's going to be fantastic. All right. Uh, so Wednesday, this Wednesday is our anniversary, one-year anniversary on-air live celebration with uh, lots of surprises. Thanks for joining us, gang. We thank Bert Ward. We thank all of you. And we'll be back tomorrow. Again, if you're joining us for the first time, our normal live hours, for those of you that want to watch live, are 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. But you can always watch any of these later on in the archives at Jim Masters TV. So for everybody here, I thank you very much for joining us. You are the very best. And uh, Soraya says, bye-bye, everyone. You too. Time to get in our Batmobiles. I think Chris in Northern Ireland said he came in the Batcopter so he can phew, take off in the Batcopter. We are going to have a nice, relaxing rest of our evening. It's a really busy, busy uh, weekend. It was a beautiful weekend. In between the afternoon show today and our evening show with Burt Ward, we walked several miles along the coast, and it was really, really nice. And then we had dinner, and then we got everything prepared for tonight's show. And it was cool because all the friends were here, too. We had Gilligan. Since it was a TV-themed episode, Gilligan was here. You may remember this came from... Bob Denver's wife, Dreama Denver, she sent me this. Aloha, Jim Dreama Denver. Uh, this was when she was on the show twice. If you missed those episodes, she's a dear friend. Check that out as well. And I'm reading the book that she sent me, uh, Gilligan's Dreams, that new book that she wrote about her love and relationship, uh, the love and relationship between Dreama and Bob Denver. Uh, really a beautiful story. And uh, I'm going to tell you more about that uh, in upcoming episodes, but uh, she sent me the book, Dream of Denver, and it's a really fantastic read. You will love it. You will love it. So uh, Renee says uh, that uh, she had a downer of a weekend with her uncle's funeral. I'm sorry to hear that, Renee. Uh, love and blessings to you and your family. I'm sure it's been a very tough and sad weekend uh, from me and my family and all the loveties here we send you uh, you know, lots of levity and joy, hugs, blessing, prayers, and our deepest condolences. And you really needed this levity tonight. Well, thank you. You know, there's many different things that people tell me they get out of the Gym Master Show Live. There's a lot I get out of it too, by, uh, get out of it too by doing it, uh, hosting it, producing it. And uh, it's beautiful comments like that that let me know that you guys really, that this show means a lot to you. So... Thanks for all of the love and attention and uh, you hang in there, Renee and everybody else. Uh, we love you all and we shall see you again soon. Salute from Isigari watching in Barcelona, Spain tonight. Good to see everybody. All these wonderful uh, faithful loveties who watch all the time and new folks discovering us. I think Jane was watching from Sweden and earlier this afternoon, we had people watching from Ireland and France and Scotland and England with our afternoon show. Really cool. You're welcome, Renee. You be well. You take care, okay? And Amy says, you're the best, Jim. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It means a lot, Amy. So are all of you. So wasn't Bert a lot of fun? I knew he was a bundle of energy when we were chatting prior to the show and Tracy. And it was a lot of fun because they were trying to set up the green screen and it was coming together really quickly. And they had to, you know, the green screen had to be held up a certain way. And then when the dogs came in, <laughs> that was golden television, golden moments again like on we say all the time on our show anything can happen on the gym master show live when we do our show lives live which is right now basically all the time every show is live anything can happen and that adds some extra added you know beauty to the show that we do it's an extra added beauty to it so all right you guys be well love you all you take care we'll be back Tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, with, again, John McDaniel. It's going to be great. One more comment coming in here. That's a good one, too. Good way to wrap. Soraya says, Jim Master Show rocks. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. I appreciate that. Go on top of Mount Everest with a bullhorn and tell everybody about the Jim Master Show Live. We appreciate that. All right. You take care and be well. And we'll see you 
on the next one. We'll be back tomorrow. Till then for all of us. Thanks for being with us. Have a great night, gang. And we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.